damn it. What? Dinosaur Kingdom's closed for the season. <laughs> 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 We we're recording. Yes. The pain, the pain in his voice when he said, "God damn, it, it's so real." Some people wake up in the morning worried about how they're going to feed their family. <laughs> Billy wakes up. It's like son of a bitch. Fuck. <laughs> Dinosaur kingdom. It's too cold for the dinos. They're not alive. <laughs> Seriously, why don't we build Jurassic Park? I've had, I've only had maybe two really solid ideas. I think in my entire life. One would be um, Titanic 2, building Titanic 2. Uh, the second, probably... Um, Jurassic Park 2. Well, no, that's, this is my third great idea is Jurassic Park 2. I'm trying to think of my second good L- idea that I had in my life. Literally the only, it might just be the one. The only reason why is because beyond having an amusement park and content creation, it is not profitable enough for uh, um, capital allocation. That's the only reason? Literally, that's the only reason why it hasn't happened. Not the dinosaur part? No, the science could be done. Then fucking do it. We Well, like, for example, when we Can you make a clip out of this right now, Avery? Hey, Elon Musk, you raggedy bitch, make Jurassic Park 2. Dude, we could actually- Quit sending rockets to your girlfriend's house. She's not going to fuck you. (laughs) Make Jurassic Park 2, bitch. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) We could actually make the giant frog, though. That was the closest thing we could probably do for 10K. To Josiah, like I literally almost set it up on this show. You're trying to pivot us to big frogs. They <laughs> set him to yeah. park. That's not we, what I want. I want to. I want to park the most with cost. Dinosaurs. We don't want close enough. We want the real thing. But the cost effectiveness of he said what? ten thousand. Why do you claim to know the cost of running a dinosaur park? <laughs> because imagine other theme parks like Disney World. Let's say that the the best we could do was Disney World and profit margin. That still like wouldn't be enough money to justify investing millions of dollars into dinosaur re. You're telling me that the amount of money that Disney World makes in a year is not enough. Not enough. Disney World, the actual park, like you we, take yeah, the running, yes. We're, we're talking about the the top. I'm gonna tell you right now how to make this park. Disney World made nine point five billion dollars in 2015. Pretty good. Not enough. Wait, 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 wait. All right, Billy. Disney, the company. world, world, the theme park. Well, let's talk about Disneyland. <laughs> okay, so now we're just <laughs> let's talk about Six Flags Great Adventure. When I'm when just Disneyland saying, is too much. I'm Mac just saying, sack. like, like realistically, that would be. But the every the, person alive would go. Like it would yes. become the number one amusement park easily. And you really want. you don't need to put that much there, right? I'm think nothing. of think of an island. What island? Long Island. Just evacuate Long Island, release the dinosaurs there, and then just do helicopter tours around it. Disney World accounts for, uh, or Disney Parks account for half of the company's overall revenue. It's about $7 billion a year. Okay, so that's a lot different than the number you said before. They made nine and a half in 2015. So $7 billion, let's say that's the max like profit. That- it's not. We know it's not. You because just I just told you it's not. On average, they're making about $7 billion a year. Right. So let's say that for this dinosaur park we opened, that's like the high end of okay. it's going to be novel. It's probably not going to hit $7 billion in the first year. They're all novel. It's an amusement park. <laughs> that's the whole point. I know. But like once you see it once, it's not like Disneyland where you go back. Why I would argue dinosaurs. live dinosaurs are more enticing to go back than Disney yes. World. But the thing is, it's going to take years to actually get real, like, You're just dinosaurs. hating on the idea of Jurassic I'm Park not, right now. If it you're, could like, be, you're like, why, I, why I, would we spend a billion dollars to make uh, clones of every cool dinosaur that every kid in America would want to see when we can just give me, personally, $10,000 <laughs> so I can make my frog? <laughs> I think it would, like... Think about it. Me with a giant frog would be a much better allocation of ten thousand well, dollars. What's your what's your profit gains off this frog, William? Look, it's actually would probably make the most profits for Barstool Sports. So through content creation, I'd have a podcast with the frog. You limit your I'd losses have... to only ten thousand dollars. Josiah said for ten thousand dollars he'd make us a super frog. How how much does it cost to feed this frog? Probably only about so Probably would cost Here's a total the amount. Lie. Here comes an absolute guess no, with no, no basis. No, reality. no, anacondas eat about a couple of like large rats a month. 
I'd predict when I had a large African bullfrog, I'd feed it about a mouse a week. So we probably could get like a large lab sized rat a week would probably be the justification and it would probably end up being around twenty dollars a month. Would he want to come live in my apartment and just eat my mice? Yeah, me too. No. In the terrarium electrical costs would be another spacing issue. There would be probably rent involved, but in the frog it'd be worth it. Yeah, the frog would need a large You're gonna make the frog pay rent? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to have a Twitch stream. I'm going to, like, we'd live stream the feedings. That would be one of the first ways for it to get Which money. would certainly not allow that. Well, I'll make my own. <laughs> my own Twitch. Right? Twitch. So there's 750000 <laughs> Wait, like, $750,000. <laughs> To fund the creation of a streaming platform for Billy, <laughs> no, no, no. in which he's allowed to Dude, show his. They got what's things. Telegram? What's the one that's uncensored? Big T. Is it Telegram? <laughs> Parlor. 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 Yeah. yeah. Or, can... or uh, get getter. Right. Getter's what's what's like one. an uncensored Twitch that we can live stream anything? Pornhub. Well, yeah, yeah. we'll put the frog on Pornhub, and or we'll... OnlyFans. Yeah, we'll stream from there. Mm-hmm. Get uns like chat roulette. Serious violence. We'll see this frog <laughs> tear if you were apart. Chat roulette and this ten thousand dollar frog was just staring at you. <laughs> Gigantic, and it would pay for itself probably within the first month. Would you get the profit gain or would no? We we we. I have to pay back my investors. Mm-hmm. We need to get Josiah back on the pod. Why not just make Jurassic Park too? Because the money is not there. You do if, not know that. You pointed to zero proof that there's no money. Yeah, if, what about just like group funding? If the money was there, some hedge fund would have allocated the funds already. Or they understand that like dinosaurs may not be like the number one priority right now. No, they, they literally invest in anything if it's like profitable. They want short term profit. Like remember Jewel? Jewel was getting money out the wazoo. Jewel like the nicotine? Yeah. Stuff? Honestly, they should make those legal again because the <laughs> alternatives are like Literally, we took, like, cigarettes, Apple computer, like, slim, like, the Tesla of e-cigarettes, like, super, like, and then we literally replaced them with junk, which is probably way worse for you because they made the good ones illegal. Have you seen some of the shit, the, these robot, these, these e-cigs these kids are smoking? Mm-hmm. Like, some of them look disgusting. Mm-hmm. And they're probably, like, Febreze mixed with God knows what that everyone's inhaling. Jewel was slim. It was. It was a science. It was also Jewel. extremely addictive. Yeah, but Jewel other... wasn't invented by like Philip Morris or anyone like that, right? Mm. Yeah, but they're like a, their own company. They should have acquired. Yeah, yeah. I think should, if I was Philip Morris, I would have acquired them. No, the... they got. Right, well, I think they were. I think they probably thought it was just cheaper to. It... to... Well, it's, to get them out of the paint and create their own thing. It's owned by. It was owned by Al- Altria or Altria. The. Uh, well, yeah, they company. bought it. That's when they got a ton of money. Yeah. But, like, the kids, the, the middle schoolers are still ripping vapes. Yeah, like crazy. It's, it's now they're ripping just worse vapes. They're probably in, in probably cigarettes instead of... You sound like every local news anchor. Like, your kids are huffing this common well, household I went, item. You know how everyone talks about how euphoria isn't a realistic uh, depiction school. of high school? Mm-hmm. But, like, like, there's a midway point, and it's kids ripping vape in the bathroom for, like, five dollars a hit yeah that's hmm. real vapes weren't a thing when we were in high school though right no yes they were they were yes it was insane yeah that's when like me and big cat started jeweling heavy back yeah, in prank. 2016 as a prank and then we got really addicted to it you were in, you were still in high school <laughs> yeah. that i yeah. was literally ripping blue vape on the way to school yep listening to part of my take sorry <laughs> Sorry, it was so addictive. Like I've never, I have never been addicted to anything it was. as hard as I was addicted to vaping. It was like first thing in the morning. What do you do? You roll over. You hit. You hit the jewel. Yeah, it was. It's super <laughs> addicting. They literally made digital cigarettes, and everyone was like, "Why is this so addictive?" <laughs> it's super healthy, right? Yeah. I literally oh, started. Oh, I I literally the only time I had a jewel was to quit dipping. And then I got addicted to vaping, trying to quit dipping. Mm -hmm. So then you, didn't you eat a cigarette to get off of that? Or swallow dip? I swallowed, so then I went back to dip and Mm -hmm. swallowed the dip. Mm -hmm. And now you're good. And now I'm good. That was, I I was, I was literally like 17 year old, like kicking the nicotine habit. That was. That's the. 
probably the easiest age to kick it, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. That was a big burden. I got off it by switching, slowly transitioning to analog cigarettes. Real stuff. And then I quit the cigarette. You seem How'd like you you'd like hand roll American spirits. Don't say that to me. Why would you? No. I'm not that guy that pulls up at a bar and pulls out his giant sack of, you know, swag tobacco. And Everyone. then makes everybody wait for 20 minutes while he rolls a cigarette. No, that guy never takes that long. Everybody thinks it's weed. But then you just disappoint them. Well, that guy usually also is only rolling spliffs. Yeah. I do. I love the smell of pipe tobacco. I really do. Same. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not like a loose leaf tobacco guy. Red oh, Man was dope. Good pipe guy. I went, out to, uh, I went out to dinner with Large on Friday night. And Large is a guy that if every restaurant that you walk to. So we started out at, um, at a bar. Then we went from the bar to a restaurant, then we went from the restaurant to another bar. Anytime you make a transition between two different buildings, Large pulls out a new cigar. And he's like, here you go. Let's, you want to smoke a cigar on the walk? It's like, okay, he must roll around with like 30 cigars. He's just handing them out like he just had a baby. Like left and right. Here, have a cigar. You have a cigar. I love the guy. It was, it, was, it was a fantastic night, but the man comes prepared. There's nothing like an 80s Wall Street guy. Yeah. Truly nothing. Yeah, and, and that he is, big time. Um, I'll bet you Wall Street in the 80s would have financed Jurassic Park, too. Not this, oh, new, sure. this new pussy Wall Street. It's like, oh, we want to mitigate risk, and we want to look, we want to invest in, uh, in the digital future. And we want to, we'll make metaverse. Jurassic Park, too, if it's in the metaverse. Literally, yeah, the metaverse. The, the, no one wants the metaverse, but there is money in the metaverse, and we are going to get thrown into the metaverse, whether we like it or not, by these giant companies. I think that... That American capitalism went downhill when the titans of industry stopped openly doing cocaine. That's where we lost our way. So back in the 80s, when, every, when all the traders on Wall Street were just like pouring a little out, they, were, they got their spoons out on the floor, really going for it. That's when we had our best ideas as a country. Now we're not an ideas country anymore. We're an execution country where all the other countries with their better drugs are coming up with the ideas, and then we're just following up with it. China's essentially putting out a blueprint and saying, hey, here's what we're going to do. And then our guys are like, yeah, whatever you say, we'll do it. We need to get back into the era where we're doing drugs and thinking would, of fucked up ways to make money. Would you say that cocaine is how we won the Cold War? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Russia Definitely helped. Yeah, Russia. I got uh, to run like like some... a dozen. I'll be back in like 40 minutes. Okay. Peace. This, you, this sounds like some America first rhetoric from you. Is that America first? It's, no, it's, it's, it's cocaine so, first. Sounds like it. Well, you're it's like, Columbia oh, we need first. to stop taking ideas from all these other countries. Get back to what makes us us. The only Colombia that I want represented in our White House is, is the District of Columbia, not the nation. But I do. We should grow our cocaine here is what I'm getting at. I've always wondered that. How come, how come Colombia grows all the, all the cocoa? Well, it plants? doesn't. It's Peru. Peru. And Paraguay. Yeah. How come? Well, Colombia also has well, Columbia a fair can... amount of them. But Colombia controls. Yeah, but you're right. There, there's a lot that's grown in like Bolivia. Yeah, I want to see. But how come? What climate do we need? Is there any part of the United States that would be conducive to growing our own cocoa plant? Because if so, if we could take control of that part of the drug trade, yeah, legalize cocaine here, we get rid of all the fentanyl deaths that are happening, all the accidental stuff. I feel like that would be. Well, that's the thing. The, fent the fentanyl really fucked it up. Yeah, so grow it, grow it here. Make it here. Well, we'd have to legalize it to regulate it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Legalize it. But I think you it's, should, a, it's a little cocaine? too dangerous. Yeah, yeah it's a little too dangerous. People to should be allowed to take cocaine in small amounts. And I'm, I'm saying this not as a drug guy. I'm saying this like cocaine, if you, it used to be in Coca-Cola. You used to get yeah, prescribed. Yeah, in the 1800s. You used to get prescribed yeah. cocaine for a toothache. You know? Again. 150 years ago. Small amounts of cocaine should but like, be legal. Did you, did you ever hear any bad stories from back then? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody so, in the That's 90s, why we stopped. <laughs> it might as well have been legal in the 18, or excuse me, in the 1980s, too. Because that's... Everybody was doing cocaine in the 80s. It was, it was all over the place. Why were the 80s so crazy? Well, because... Um, well, basically... Ne neon colors. Neon colors were invented, and then people <laughs> lost their minds and had to do drugs to cope with it. Okay. So it was the perfect time in society where there wasn't any outside threats and secular action could be totally withheld. 
Wait. and uphold. Didn't the Cold War end in the 80s? Right, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to actively... still think about what Billy just said. I, I am too. It was the only so, time in history where there's so secular, think, we could take secular actions. So think about, think about Rome, right? Okay. And like about the best time in Rome was about like 30 years before fall where everything was nuts. That's like eight. Are you saying we're about to fall? Well, we're about to go. You're, Billy's doing like a retroactive so take like of saying. So like hard times make good. <laughs> <laughs> In the eighties was just the good times made by hard men. I would say that like the sixties were the good like the boomers when they were coming up and they were they were doing all the woodstock. That yeah. was the soft times made by hard men. But would and then the eighties But the eighties I'd say are good times. No, the eighties were Saw a lot of soft men run around the eighties because there was no war. Because there was no yeah. So, so was, the, the the Joe Rogan yeah quadrant of uh, of Tibetan <laughs> wisdom is hard times make hard men, hard men make for soft times, soft times make for soft men, soft, soft men, men make, make for hard, hard times. times, which is just Whoa. like something. And very, that was the eighties. It's just something very convenient to say because a lot of times people like to feel like they're the only masculine person that exists right now. And so it's this Hell happens, yeah, brother. This happens every generation. I don't know why people don't ever pick up on this. Every generation looks at the generations coming after them and they're like, these kids are a bunch of soft assholes in my day. Whatever happened to the masculine man, man that used to run around forging out victories for himself and not depending on the state for like literally every generation says this about people beneath you. Fact is, your parents said the same thing about you. Fact is their parents said the same thing about them. It's mm -hmm. just something that happens when you get older is you look down on the generation that's after you and you're like, oh, the, words, but, the world's going but to hell. How's it different when I look at like middle schoolers and high schoolers nowadays and they literally don't go outside? That's Okay, so I first of all, that's not true. They, they don't go middle outside. schoolers do go outside. No, they don't. I've seen several. They play Minecraft. I've seen several. <laughs> Billy, that. that's exactly what people say about yeah, people I think, our age. Yeah. I know, but they li like, like, kids yeah. don't even like sports. That's, again, I, I think we're making really broad I'm generalizations serious. now. Uh, I'm going to sound like, uh, what's his face? A boomer. No, Kirk Herbstreit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Kids. But, like, that is true. Back in my day, we loved football. No, now but they like, just play it. We, yeah, we'd go out. Sounds good when Big T says it. That was a, that's a banger of a quote. No, I mean, that's, that's basically what he said. Now they just play they it. Don't, they don't love football enough. Billy, kids do play football. Kids do play sports. They go outside. But they don't have like they they do other things for fun. That's a extracurricular. So program. did you? When right. you were growing up, did you... you play Call of Duty? No, I I didn't play. I the only video game I played really hard was when I had a knee surgery and I played Skyrim. But like video games were a thing when we were young. I only right. played video games when I got surgery on my knee from playing football <laughs> too hard. <laughs> Yeah, Billy, I Those mean, facts. it's very easy to look at the kids that are younger than you. Like, I could look at your generation and say the same thing. Yeah, do you, do you hate us? Billy's generation doesn't play sports. Did you know that? No, Billy, I didn't. Billy's generation lives inside. All they care about is the internet and their little podcasts and their <laughs> web logs that they write. They don't care about going outside in the sun. Touch grass, Billy. Love a good web log. This Touch generation grass. can't even deal with... Say it. I'm gold. Huh? Oh, he said the common oh come on, Bill. The common cold. I thought you said common goals. Yeah, it took me a second oh, to figure out what I'm joking. Mean. This is partly satirical. Also, <laughs> kids like kids that are growing up right now, it's not it's not their fault of any of the, like any of the restrictions that are being put in place on them. Imagine like in the past two years, it'd be pretty tough for a kid that's in elementary or middle school to not get really into video games because you couldn't play sports outside for a while. You know, you're, you're not allowed to have close contact with a lot of people your age to play sports. Uh, depending on what part of the country you're in, you probably haven't, some of them haven't been able to go out and do like an actual season of regular sport. True. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's one of these common things that people do all the time where they're like, oh, the younger generation's soft. I'm the, I'm the real masculine man. Why can't people be more like the idea that I wish that I was? Like, Joe Rogan sometimes thinks that he, like, He's he's a caveman. He thinks he's like he's going. You know what he's doing? He's going back to monkey. Return to monk. Return to monk, like the like the liver king. 
that post that he had was all time when he said one thing I've been doing a lot of recently is I've been uh, I've been really treating myself to huge meals, going outside, smelling the meat, getting the fire really, really hot, putting the meat on the fire and smelling all the burning of the fat, just enjoying the aromas, getting really hungry and eating. It's like, dude, you are talking about eating. Like this is a, a, a process of eating. Really? But he, yeah, he he likes to think that he's. He's a caveman. He's the only masculine person out there. And um, I'm not picking on Joe because I think Joe's just like, yeah. it's natural. But I, I've started to do some simulated hunts. Successful hunts. Yeah? Yeah. How do you do that? Well, I get my dog. And then you, you send Mincy running down the street. <laughs> and then you, then you stick your dog on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's Look, we put treats in Mincy's back pocket. It <laughs> works for everybody. He needs to lose weight. And we need to get his adrenaline higher. So, yes. I release my dog on Mincy to chase him, but I'm <laughs> close behind my dog. Yeah. You can give the, the go around. You can give the command to stop. Yeah. So I have, you know, it's actually awesome. Me, my dog's gotten really good at running beside me. And like, we actually been doing like two mile, three mile runs. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if it's like, people are like, oh, you shouldn't take your dog for long runs, but he loves it. And we just vibe. Good. Good to know. I listen to Mongolian metal music. It's pretty freaking awesome. Mongolian music is cool in general. The Hun, the Who, the Who, H U. That's they have same some awesome band. Wolf Totem. Just, just Google it. I'm telling you, this is like some crazy. Have I talked about this before? I think you might have. Yeah. I've been getting into um, microtonal music when I want to like really amp myself up for a workout. Where so on a guitar. And on a piano, that's probably the easiest way to think about it. On a piano, all the white keys um, are representative of notes that are in a C scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, the black keys are like the sharps and the flat. So if you're looking at a music scale and the notes that you're looking at are C, D, E, right in a row. D, mm -hmm. D, E. Mm -hmm. There are notes that are in between the C, D, E. There's C, D sharp. I probably just did the full step there, but mm -hmm. um, they're broken down into like C, C sharp, D, but there are actually notes that are even in between the C and the C sharp. And when you play them together, it like it sends a weird signal to your brain oh. that either it can induce feelings of anxiety, it can induce feelings of like getting really amped up. It can actually like put you in different binaural beats. Have you heard of binaur binaural yeah. beats? Yeah. <clears throat> in uh when I was studying, I'd always put on these binaural beats that help you focus and get in the flow state, mm -hmm. which is pretty insane. But they also have a bunch of ones for working out, for sleep, and supposed to like get your brain waves mm -hmm. synced up. I don't know the exact science behind it, but the placebo is pretty cool, and I it always did help me get into the flow state. I would say like right now we're in the flow state. We are in the flow state. We're just flowing. Um, I had an idea for a segment that we should do on this show. Let me know what you guys think about it. It's just called Remember That? That's the name of the segment, where you just remember something from a couple years ago that you haven't thought <clears> of for a while. A good segment. Stuff that we don't talk about enough. Like Scholastic Book Fair. Remember that? Yeah, the Scholastic goated. Book Fair. Yeah. Goated. Goated. Absolutely goated. What else? You had $7 at the Scholastic Book Fair. You were king. Um, Digimon. Yeah, I, I, I'm not familiar with Digimon. If it's like Pokemon, but off-brand. Yeah. That's what, something from the past. Tam I, Tamagotchi. Yeah, Tamagotchi. Yeah. The, the virtual pet. You yep. see, we're young enough that everything that, remember that, is like childish. Yeah. So. You don't have any memories of like, remember that, but it's, well, I, I, it's you as an adult. I remember when Anderson Cooper was a war journalist. That was remember <laughs> that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When remember, he was all strapped up. Remember when Geraldo Rivera got like, kicked out of Iraq because he went on live TV and gave coordinates for the troops that he was covering. That was, that was wild. Yeah. That was a wild time. Arian, you with us? Oh, you're muted. Okay. Uh, All my, right. Oh, you should be able to hear me now. Gotcha. Sweet. What's up, Arian? Nice shirt. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, shirt, shirt is definitely cracking. What's good with y'all, man? Man, my shit is all fucked up, man. Mac... Is superior to Windows. 
like Windows, you have to update drivers and all this, and I don't know shit about it. And so my, my like nothing was reading my camera. Very confusing times, but we had it, baby. All right, I love it. Yeah, Mac Macs are so much easier to use. I I know a lot of people that are real computer guys that swear by using PCs, but it's like if you if you are a casual computer user, then it's definitely Mac all day. Yeah, um, I, Mac is good for uh like yeah like you can say casual computer users but like pc is better for like gaming or if you're like into coding and shit like that but i'm not yeah. so why well, i'm into gaming that's why i've been using my gaming laptop but anyway man this shit is too complicated for me do you have any member that's i've got a, i've got another member that that i was thinking of over the weekend uh the alaska air flight from like 2017 where this like 22 year old maintenance worker just straight up got in the cockpit and then took off in a big passenger plane and just I saw did like that. barrel rolls all over Seattle and the entire town was I going I do not remember that. I, I feel like this was TikTok. underreported on. Yeah, well, no, it was big for like a day. And then people just forgot about it. This dude, he was a maintenance worker. He was 22. I think his name was Rusty. And he, Hell yeah, he Rusty. just decided one day, you know what? I'm going to fly this plane. And he, he got into the cockpit well, as it was about to board. So there was n nobody else on board, just Rusty. And then he just took off and started doing barrel rolls and shit and pulling off all these crazy maneuvers. And he was like talking to air traffic control. And they were like, hey, um, do you, can, we, can we get you to land this plane somewhere? And, uh, and he was like, I don't know. Landing wasn't really part of my equation when I decided to take off. Yeah. He was like, I've, I play a lot of video games, so I'm pretty good at this whole flight thing. <laughs> and, uh, and he was pulling off some crazy maneuvers. He did this one like giant 360 loop-de-loop. And when he pulled up at the bottom of it, he was 30 feet off the ground, off the, uh, off the water that he was flying over in a giant fucking passenger airplane. Well, the video games are too realistic. Yeah, that's how he learned how to yeah. do it is through There's flight ton simulators. Tons of people with flight simulators. Yeah, and then he crashed onto an island. You and I had a member that the other day. Do you remember what that was? Remember that? You and I were talking about something on Friday that we were like, remember that? That, that uh, wasn't, wasn't reported on very much after it happened. What was it? I forget. The Nashville bombing. Yeah, that's true. Remember the Nashville bombing? That, was that they said the guy just, oh, he just killed himself. Like he was, he was oh, just the kind guy, of a weird. Oh, the guy uh, after the election? No, well, yeah, it was, I, it was, well, it was Christmas, so I guess it was like a month or after the election. Before he, dis the, he but was, it, it was in front of the AT&T AT building. AT building. Right? Yeah, because it was also connected to the, he, it was like the stop the steal type shit. He was, de I don't, he I was didn't definitely, hear about um, that. he was definitely into weird internet yeah, uh, sources of the information. The machines. He was obsessed with the machines. He was. A, I think he was a QAnon guy. He, he was like he thought they hacked the voting machine. I think he was just yeah. He was definitely radicalized by the internet. But no, we didn't really hear me and Big T were talking about it. We haven't heard much about about him after the fact and what he was going for. There's a lot of like that. But I think I think that's one of the. Ilian Gonzalez. Yeah. Remember Ilion or Ilion or Ilion? I remember that. Ilion, how old was he? Like, like twelve, maybe. Was Shit, I was, I was, I was around that age too, honestly. So I don't, I just remember hearing the hoopla behind it. He's probably about our age. Yeah. Who is that? Yeah. You don't know Ilion? No. So no. he was a Cuban boy. I think he was like ten or so at the time. Yeah, something um, like that. And he he came over on a raft from Cuba. He defected to the United States. And I think his family was on the raft with him, and I might be making this part up. I'm not 100% sure. I think he had a family member that died on the way yeah. over to the United States so, in the raft. So he was actually saved by a dolphin. Really? Yeah. So he, got, he ended up coming to shore in the United States on this raft from Cuba, found his family in the Miami area, I believe, and uh, Cuba demanded that he be returned to Cuba because that's where the majority of his family was from. And he had like some distant cousins in the United States that I don't know if he had even met before. But um, there was like a big standoff where his family was trying to keep him in the United States. And then his Cuban family and the Cuban government wanted him back. The, uh, the government conducted a raid. They broke into the apartment with like assault weapons, grabbed him, and then sent him back home. To Cuba, and it was like a big thing. People were like, they, "I they, thought we didn't do that." Uh, the Clinton administration decided that uh, it was appropriate. Janet Reno decided that he should go back to Cuba, and so they, yeah, no, they broke into the apartment with straight up 
a SWAT team. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures. It was pretty fucked, fucked up. up. It was pretty fucked up. He was, it was just like a kid that was hiding. They knew where he was. I mean, this this picture is insane. I thought our policy was like if you got here from Cuba, like you're 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 good. We might have changed that by now, but there were, for whatever reason, it was a big international. Uh, it was a big to do. Back so in the 90s. now he's like uh, he's a huge pro Cuba guy. So they they got to him. Yeah, he's like. He's now used as a spokesperson. He's a yeah. puppet. Well, maybe he just. Well, appreciates what do you mean? What do you mean he's pro? Yeah. What do you, What do you mean he's pro Cuba? What does that mean? Uh, a Cuban boy who caused diplomatic row is now a young man. He's grown up now, almost an adult. But there's no mistaking the face of Elian Gonzalez. The 16-year-old youth in an olive green military school uniform has not changed so much from the boy who a decade ago was the subject of a diplomatic battle between the Cuba and the U.S. So. He's he's attending a Young Communist Union Congress at a convention center in West Havana last weekend. The images were posted on government websites yesterday, then widely transmitted by state-controlled media. Fire. Well, he's... You can tell that he had no choice. But the... I thought that... Okay. I thought we, we normalized relations with Cuba. I thought that was one thing that Obama did that he said he was going to do. Because Jay-Z I, went I've, there. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> we have diplomatic relations with with Cuba uh, now. I know they took off the embargo if I'm not if I'm not mistaken because I know that's why Cuban cigars were so um like taboo and everybody mm-hmm. thought if it was a Cuban cigar it was better. No, I just it was illegal because they had embargoes here. Or we placed embargoes on them. And so I, I mean, I'm not 100% familiar with it, but from my understanding um I believe that's what 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 you said is is accurate. Like Obama uh, was trying to smooth relations out. Like he even got chastised for saying they have better health care and a better yeah uh, ed- education system. Um, I know I know there are aren't they pushing to be a state or are they Cuba? Yeah, I think it's like it's like it's like um, split, isn't it? I don't know enough about it. Hmm. Yeah. Cuba wants to be part of the United States. Yeah. Oh no, I'm thinking Puerto Rico. Yeah. Oh, don't 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. don't. Yep, I'm tripping. Yeah, we we had the the discussion of what states would you eliminate if you wanted to. That's say right. That. That's Rico. right. That's well, right. I think Havana syndrome really messed up. Was actually a lot more damaging for U.S. Cuban relations than we want to admit. But they said it wasn't real, right? Just recently, after Biden gave how many millions of dollars to. The people that supposedly suffered from well, it. Well, actually, so Biden, I, Biden like personally walked up to him and was like, "Hey, I heard that you got a headache." Well, it was part of his here's 150 his plan. Right? No, but Havana syndrome was. I I don't think it's a political issue. I think there. I, it's actually better for these people to think it never existed, and it doesn't exist because it actually will help. I was reading when we talked about Havana syndrome, people who think there's something wrong with their brain get to spiral mm-hmm. like something's wrong with my brain. So if it's like nothing's wrong, it'll actually help them. Heal. Mm-hmm. The the defense spending bill that Biden signed included thirty million dollars for victims of Havana syndrome. Okay. Hmm. Do you think? What do you think we should have done about that, Big D? I I don't know. I just find it curious that because I, I thought after, after that, then we're like, oh yeah, it wasn't. Right. I thought at the time it was bullshit that he was that we we're allocating money where it's like that we don't even know that this is a thing. Right. And um, the research. Yeah, to re- I guess to research it, that would, I mean, that would like, be useful. The way that people were talking about, like, Havana syndrome, I feel like how people talk about, like, mental health originally. Like, it's not real? It's like, it's not real. Like, what? These people are phonies. We need to, we need to uh, normalize the conversation around yeah. Havana syndrome. Yeah, because you have people. Havana syndrome awareness tweets <laughs> on Sunday. Oh, so I lied. So Obama lacks the restrictions. Um, Trump put them back on. And Joe Biden promises to get rid of them. Promised to get rid of them, okay. but they were never totally uh, ended. The right. embargoes and the sanctions. See, I would like to go visit Cuba. I think that would be a fun place to go. Remember uh, Coney twenty twelve? Yeah, I do. That's remember a big. Coney. That was a big one. Oh yeah. No, that that was that was especially hit home because uh, my best friend in the whole world, um, who's a brilliant, brilliant mind, uh, he grew up in that era he grew up in uganda and so he he grew up uh underneath that dictatorship and like some of his family members were killed and uh his his father got political asylum for uh in the u.s 
Damn. It was oh. yeah, it's wild. He is wild hearing some of the stories and some of the shit that, that he had to go through. The like child was, soldiers and stuff. Mm-hmm. How oh, like I know he's like I ain't gonna I ain't gonna tell a two personal story, but like he he has, he has very real effects of what uh what he what he went through. But he's one of the most kindest, loving human beings you'll ever meet. Just brilliant mind. There was a rumor last year that that Tony died from COVID. Word. Yeah, said, I don't know if it's true or not. Said the same thing about John Cena. They did say the same thing. We don't joke about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't joke about that. Really. No, but the original the I don't know the what happened with Tony. Of course is real on the ground in Africa in Uganda is 100% real but the guy who ran the Coney 2012 thing he I, I don't know what exactly happened he had a mental break like a, run around naked yeah he had a, a schizophrenic break or a psychological break of some sort in downtown Austin I think I think was it was in Austin I thought it was in San Diego I think it was running around on the streets naked maybe even jacking off like trying to jack yeah. off while he ran down the street San Diego Which, police detained a naked Russell for a psychiatric evaluation. He allegedly vandalized cars and made sexual gestures, removing his underwear during a public breakdown that was filmed and released online. Wow. You think you'd be able to jack off running? Jason Russell. Like, while running? We talked about this on Anus that one time. Did we? Yeah. About, part, about long jumping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it gives you a boost. <laughs> Yeah, I think you could. No, I don't think actually. I don't think you could jack off while running. Yeah. No. Maybe a light jog. Can you do yeah. it like pumping your arm, or is that? Well, yeah, the motion. Right. You, can, you can do the motion. I'm talking about the the physical response. Well, this is devolved. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can maintain a boner and bust what? while running. I mean, blood flow would be increased to other areas so i don't know that's a really it would get redirected right aaron was viagra intriguing question <laughs> was was viagra use is a performance enhancing <sighs> drug not like an official one but popular amongst the nfl remember um i knew, uh, a, I knew a couple of dudes that tried it i yeah. i didn't see any increase in their performance but i know a couple do you know what is um ritalin yeah Ritalin is is like a super hyper like it's a limitless pill low key. Seattle. Um, I never yeah, I never I never tried it. Um cuz I have atrial fibrillation and so I'm scared of like any stimulant that you know um, that's un I don't want to wear of and so but I I I know dudes who who have taken it and say that this shit it changes the way you do things. Yeah. The Adderall. Yeah, the yeah. the Legion of Boom. They were using uh they're using Adderall and Viagra, I think. I think it was on the cocktail, and then the the Red Sox. The <laughs> I didn't even think about that when I yeah. the, the 2004 <laughs> Red Sox were also doing Viagra. Were That's funny as fuck. Yeah. Who who on the Red Sox? Uh, I think Pedro Martinez was putting Viagra. They were like bringing this booze mixture that had Viagra and I think Greenies in them. Hell yeah. As he told I Seth mean, Meyers, I, Manny Ramirez used to spike the 2004 Red Sox booze with Viagra. Like I think, three 100 milligram pills of it in a bottle of, quote, Mama Wanna. <laughs> no idea what that PEDs is, bro. I mean, should absolutely be legal. They I should agree. absolutely be 1,000% legal. Like, it's the dumbest shit in the world. It's like this in... You think in every sport? Every sport. Okay, yeah. Is, Dope the fuck up as much as you want to dope up, though. Like, what about fight sports? That's all that's that, the one. man. But what if they're all like, that. what if guys are like all dying because they're all. so jacked and getting hit? That's just, that's the sport, bro. You act like people won't watch it more. <laughs> like I'm not, I won't watch it, but like people that love the blood sports, they go love that shit. Like, I, why wouldn't you? I feel why like why would you want your athletes at the top of the top? Like do it. The why thing not? is, like I I tend to agree for the most part that if players are informed about what they're using then they should be able to make their own choices. But if there's like brand new stuff that's coming out that they're, tr they're using their own bodies as scientific experiments and they can be causing long, long-term damage to their internal organs or their brain um, by taking things that aren't proven. <laughs> like, why would, that's, that's a problem whole, though, isn't it? No, the whole sport is taking internal damage to the brain. Football, hockey, any boxing, that's the whole sport. That's all. We right. know that. I get, okay, we so don't I, care. I, we don't I, care. I, I get that. But, it, but if a guy, let's say like a 23-year-old linebacker right out of college, 
like shoots himself up with what he thinks right. is some sort of new steroid concoction that he got from a lab, mm-hmm. and then right. he immediately goes into organ failure and dies. Mm-hmm. And it's that shit would suck. That would suck. But so I there, think you're. I think you're. Like a, I think. But if it's we legal, have a difference of a, well, we have. I think we have a difference between like the morality of it. We're trying to distinguish, right? Like I don't think. And like, I just don't think inherently like a lot of these violent sports are moral in general. Right. But like, we are just, we're just used to them. And so my thing is if you're going to do it, then do it. But like, we like to draw these arbitrary lines of like what moral and what, what is and what isn't moral. None of it's moral. Like we literally just like, we fuck our bodies up and our minds Mm -hmm. for the longevity, but we're, we're okay with a certain amount, but not okay with what we're not comfortable with. Well, we're only not comfortable with it because these, it, like I said, they're arbitrary lines that we've drawn. There's no distinct. Like it's either we don't do it or we're not gonna do it. Yeah, that's my opinion anyway. Um, one last member of that member, uh, the movie Ready Player One. It's set in 2045. I actually watched it over the weekend. You watched it? No. <laughs> you motherfucker! That what a god damn the pump fake. I was, that's I was, fucked up. I was planning on watching. It. I really was, but then Friday night I had a big dinner, and I came home and I fell asleep. <laughs> And then Saturday, <laughs> there was football. You know, okay. Sunday, there was football. Dinner. I don't have time. For now me. you actually have to watch it. Now you I, saw how happy he was? I know. I, know. I gotta watch it. Aaron, did you watch any of the football this weekend? I did watch football this weekend. Shit was weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> what it games did you sick. watch? I watched uh, the first half of the Rams game and the first half of the Bucks game. Um, same game. Those were the same one. Oh no! Okay, not the bus game then. The Bills. Um, Niners, Niners. Yeah, I, I yeah, get those colors yeah. mixed up too. The, the Niners and the um, yeah, and then there was one more I watched. It was the last game. Bills Chiefs. Um, Bills. Bills Chiefs. I did watch that game. That was a crazy ending of that game. Yeah, I was definitely playing Valorant while it was on, but I, I was definitely yeah. on in the background. What are your so. thoughts on NFL overtime rules? Trash. I've always thought it was trash. It's the dumbest shit in the world. So stupid. You dumb. know what? It, My- college, college, college shit is supreme. Well, so no, no, but you know now they fucked up college too, because now oh, what are they doing? so now um, so the first overtime is the way it used to be from the twenty five. Second one you have to go for two, and then the third one they just start doing alternating two point conversions. So like Illinois, I, 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 don't, I don't mind the going for two shit because yeah, no, I don't know, but like not it's just it's plays from the three yard line, like that's it. Oh, it's just two point like, conversions. Yes. No, that's dumb. So, like, Illinois and Penn State went to nine overtimes this year just trading two-point conversions. That has to be a business decision, like, for time constraints. Well, so, a few years ago, it was Texas A&M and LSU played a seven-overtime game that ended 74-72, and it was awesome, and everyone loved it, and they were like, yeah, we can't have this again. How late that (laughs) game end? You know, it was a night all, game. It ended very late. Yeah. All my all motherfuckers making rules and never have any kind of logic behind this shit. And it's usually well, it's usually tied to money. Somehow, some way, it's tied to money. And they don't give a fuck about what fans want. They don't give a fuck about what's good for players. They just care about their bread. Well, the whole thing with this was player safety, quote unquote. But like, <laughs> you are no, I, the 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 frequency <laughs> with with which those games occur is not worth changing the rule to potentially like. What if that happens in a national championship game and you've just got teams didn't they, going for didn't two? They, didn't they take, uh, did, if I'm, I could be remembering uh, incorrectly, but didn't they, they take players trying to unionize and get workers comp to the Supreme Court? Uh, they definitely took it to court. I, it may have gone to the Supreme Court, yeah. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about player safety. Exactly. <laughs> this is whack. Fuck out of here. Should be it's like- all about money. It'd be like NHL three on three overtime, but NFL like there's a receiver, quarterback, seven on seven drills. But yeah. you know what's you know what's interesting about the NFL overtime rule? The whole thing is like, oh, if you do the college overtime rule, it doesn't value the defense. But then it means that if the defense makes the stop on that first drive, they technically should win the game. In the coin toss, you know what I'm saying? So, for example, the Bills last night had stopped the Chiefs then the Bills should have won the game even though they didn't score any points. That's what the current overtime rules apply. No, because then what you're saying is a defensive stop is equivalent to a touchdown, which right. would, would be – because if you go by that logic, then every defensive stop, you should get points for it. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I want college and the NFL to both adopt a universal overtime. You start at your own 40. Each team gets the ball. For basically college rules, but you start at your own 40. Uh, you get a chance to score if you don't score – the other team gets a chance no matter what. 
And then if it's still tied, you go the 50. If it's tied after that, you move to the plus 40 and keep going in. And then on the rare occasion that the game does go that long, now you're only going from the 10-yard line. I don't mind that. I don't hate it. You can also... Because, it. because that also, like when Tennessee got fucked in the Music City Bowl on a call, the other team <laughs> starts in field goal range. So, mm -hmm. like, your defense doesn't even have a chance to, to like, save the game for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they're starting at the 40, you have a chance to get a stop. Mm -hmm. I, I just like the idea of playing one more quarter. I'm down with that, too. Play another quarter, 15 minutes. Just go. And then if it's still tied, guess what? Another quarter. I saw one idea today. Both teams start at the plus 45 back-to-back, -back and whoever scores first wins. Yeah, like a shootout. I think... Like have all the yes, whole squad. Both on teams' of offenses and defenses that's... on the field at the same time, going opposite directions. I, I <laughs> with think two that's, balls. I think that's yes. Where... They're playing separate games. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what our idea was for um for the XFL when we were coming up with ideas for the XFL back in like 2019. We had an idea that was that's like, actually what they should. Do. That was like a shootout, but I think ours was from what was it from the ten, and it was like alternating plays. To you scores. If you tie, guess what? Back to the ten yard line for both teams. Alternating plays. That'd be so fun, wouldn't it? Um, also, the idea that both quarterbacks should get to touch the ball, I understand it, but I'm I'm also finding myself being sucked more and more into the whole like defense is part of the game too. Maybe so I'm then just getting why, older. Why shouldn't the other team's defense have to be part of the game? Why shouldn't the Chiefs defense have to be part of the game? Because the coin told us otherwise. Okay, so so it's all it all comes back to a coin. Yeah. Flip. Well, Josh Allen was the best quarterback in terms of calling coin flips of any quarterback all season long. I think he was undefeated against the coin. Returns, the regression. Yeah, the regression. What we tough. needed, fails and this is fails. not not even from a Falcons fan, but as someone who wants to see the overtime rules change, we needed the Falcons to beat the Patriots in overtime in the Super Bowl, and we'd have the, the rules would have been changed that off season immediately. Yep. Yeah. If it if it happens to the crazy thing is if it happens to Brady, Mahomes, or I would say like Rogers. Well, see, like last night they were both so good that it doesn't matter whoever it happened to. Yeah. You need you you would have needed a team like the Falcons to beat the Patriots in yeah. overtime in a playoff game. I, I think why I think why I don't why I don't give a fuck about it like that like. Like I do think that the NFL overtime rules are shit, but like the reason why I wouldn't like complain about them or anything is because uh, Gary Kubiak was my coach, and he just had some of the realest approach to the way he did things. And like one of them was, uh, I don't give a fuck what the rules are. The rules are the same for both of us, and we got to play by these rules. These are the rules, and if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. And we're gonna do everything we can to win. It is what it is. There is no unfair advantage. These are the rules. Stick by them. Let's fucking go. I love. I used to love that shit because it was like it made because like one time I think it was the NFL lockout uh, when we couldn't be there for the off season. He just gathered everybody and said, "It is what it is. Let's fucking go. We're strapping up with who we got and where we going." I'm like, I love. I just love that. I that that mentality of like, fuck it, let's go. I used to love that shit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I understand people complaining. Though. All right, let's talk about Tesla. Let's talk about Nikolai Tesla. Was he Serbian, Billy? That, we need to establish that right off the bat because Billy said in the group chat that he was Serbian. I read some things that might dispute okay, so actually, nation of origin. I'm hearing Croatia. Yeah, I mean, that whole place is such a mess. No offense. What, disrespectful I mean, just, to the Balkans. Well, I, I, I'm actually, I, <laughs> I'm actually my, my grandmother was uh, something around there. She doesn't even know. So... I can say that. Billy can't be racist against the Balkans. Some of his, some of his favorite grandparents were Serbs. Exactly. A uh, black friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard a rumor today that Darren Ravel was actually bidding on a Malcolm X fedora. <laughs> and he was trying to buy that. No way. Somebody said that he was, yeah. Hey, you dumb, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making it up. I don't believe that shit, no. Marshall Newhouse said it. Friend of, the, friend of the program, Marshall Newhouse, said it. <laughs> said it to the chat. I don't believe that shit, man. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me look it up, and, because he might have been joking, but he said, like, Darren Ravel is bidding on a Malcolm X Dora. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tesla. So let's talk about Tesla. We're going to jump into Tesla here in a second, but before we do, Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is back. I love Bird Dogs. I don't know about you guys, but um, they sent us a new shipment of their gear. Bird Dogs is the best product 
in the entire world. If you love shorts like I do, and I'm a man who loves shorts, Bird Dogs is must have. Bird Dogs has changed the game when it comes to shorts. It's got built in underwear lining right inside the shorts. It's perfect for workouts. You take them, you take your bird dogs, you wear them to the gym, you change out of your bird dogs into a new set of bird dogs. It eliminates all the, uh, all the planning that you have to do when it comes to bringing new pairs of underwear, finding a place to put your old underwear after you've worked out. It's great for swimming, great for the beach. I wore bird dogs every single day when I went to the ocean this summer. They double as swimsuits and they now make joggers. So they're the most comfortable shorts in the world and they've evolved. They've evolved into joggers. Your legs look great in bird dogs. I get a lot of compliments. Yo, PFT, why do your legs look so good today? That's something that's frequently said around the office. Well, one, because I'm doing squats. Two, because I'm wearing bird dogs. Bird dogs is also doing the best podcast promo that we've ever had. If you go to birddogs.com, you enter promo code DOSE, they're going to give you a free bird dogs whistle football. That's right, like the old Nerf Vortex howler footballs that whistle when you throw them. They're the best for tailgates. It's the best toy in the history of the world. I would say. Uh, Hank came to the beach this summer. We brought out the whistle football. Billy, toss me the vortex. Toss me the vortex. Hank threw this, Hank, Hank threw this football 72 yards on the beach. No joke. We stepped it off. Make you feel like you're Josh Allen. Use uh, promo code DOSE at checkout. So go to birddogs.com. Use promo code DOSE. And boom, you get a free bird dogs football with your pair of bird dogs. You're not going to take these things off. I promise you. I love bird dogs. I honestly wear them every day when I'm wearing shorts. Now they make joggers. Bird dogs is awesome. Check them out. Birddogs.com. Promo code. Don't know why. Um, oh, no. Marshall says he's currently bidding on a Malcolm, on Malcolm X's fedora. What else would he bid on? It might be a joke. Anyways, uh, Tesla. So, Billy, talk, talk to me about Tesla because we all know the car company. Right, the car company that we, we discussed a little bit last week. It's, they've got the most confusing door handles in the game. That's really what I know them for. There are two things. It's impossible to find the door handle to get in or out on your first, on your first try with Tesla. And two, there's basically an iPad that's in the car. Your car has a computer on it. So um, besides that, don't know that much about Tesla, the brand. Um, but I do know that they got their name from an old inventor, Nikolai Tesla. Nikola, Nikola Tesla was a Serbian American inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist, best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current electrical supply system. So, yeah, a lot of people you hear about Nikola. Does, does anybody else have any information on Nikola Tesla before we begin? Like, what is what's everyone's first? I just learned about him for this. I didn't know. I didn't know that Nikola Tesla was a person until like a year ago. So I, I knew about him in that he was always compared to Thomas Edison. And a lot of people feel like he got a raw deal, like Thomas Edison was stealing his shit. I think his that ideas. he got a raw deal. And so that's, that's what I had heard about him, that he was a, an inventor, but he had some personal demons that he was battling. And so because mm -hmm. of that and some bad luck, he's not as well known as Thomas Edison became known. Um, and so that's why, uh, partially why they named the, the company after him. And a lot of people, a lot of like modern day inventors and scientists have a lot of respect for Nik Nikola Tesla. That's, that's my background on the guy coming into today. Mine was like, he, I, I knew he was like a brilliant um, scientist um, for his study of electricity and electromagnetism. What really captivated me was uh, <laughs> when I really went down that flat earth rabbit hole. They fucking love Tesla. And I was I always uh, kind of wondered why. And it's because um, they don't think gravity is a thing. And they think that er most things that can be described for gravity, they chalk it up to electromagnetism. Okay. So it, it, it was interesting how they made a lot of their claims. Obviously, they made a lot of leaps and, and jumps. But um, yeah, but, but what he did was brilliant as fuck. And he got fucked over by... Um, I think it was Rockefeller um, and uh, Edison. So wait, back up for a second. When you're talking about electromagnetism, people who are flat earthers, they don't believe in gravity. They think that there's like a magnet that's, that's underneath the soil of the earth that's pulling people down. No, they, 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 there's, I mean, there's different beliefs, but the basis of it is they, they don't think gravity is a thing. 
they think a lot of the effects of gravity are different physical effects. And one of them is electromagnetism. They believe that electromagnetism is like the key to uh, us understanding how the earth orbits everything. Um, I, they can't explain, I can't explain it to you because they can't explain it. It makes no sense. Right. But, but that's what they believe. Um, so Tesla, I know that he died here in New York. Um, and he died pretty poor, right? Mm-hmm. He just feeding birds, feeding birds, day, feed birds, surrounded by his pigeons. And I feel like anybody that dies with their pigeons, anyone that just has an active interest in pigeons, to me, I always feel like they're they're probably a genius. It's something that smart people love to do is just like raise pigeons, right? Fly Mike pigeons. Tyson, Mike Tyson. So the lady at uh, the lady on Home Alone, lady on Home Alone. There you go. Um. What's that movie? Ghost Legend of the Sa- Ghost Dog Legend of the Samurai. I think Rizza directed it. Forrest I Whitaker, I think, is like a samurai. Never seen it. It's a good movie. Anyways, he raised pigeons. But there's something. If I see somebody that raises pigeons, I'm always intrigued by that person. There's always something going on. Now, <laughs> Tesla. The big, the big thing with Edison versus Tesla was that Edison developed the direct current electrical power system, while Tesla had the alter- alternating current, which we now use today. And he originally invented it, and we just recently repurposed it. What's the difference between the AC and the DC? Which, by the way, that's where AC-DC got their name. Hmm. Alternating current, direct current. Electricity. Fun fact. All right, well, this up. well Billy's looking up. There's probably, it's probably a boring yeah, differential to make. it has to do with switching. The AC switches back and forth in regular intervals, while it's DC uh, is electrical current, which flows consistently in one direction. DC, so the- DC flows from like A to B, and it only goes in one direction. And then AC changes periodically based on whatever. Okay, so they both had, they both like figured out competing methods of electricity. We don't, yeah, we basically. Don't, so if, if that's true, if, if he was like a pioneer in the field of electricity and he was like, you know, instrumental in getting lights in every building, uh, we don't really respect the people that discovered electricity enough in this society. I think we should do that more often. Well, cause like it, electricity is probably the most important thing that we use. Edison basically like took from the small man in Tesla and like pawned it off as his own idea. Also, he was like an immigrant. So you can see that. All right, so, too. so let's back it up. Let's back it up a little bit. So Tesla, he was born in Serbia or Croatia, depending on which website that you're reading. Montenegro. Montenegro. And um, he had he had some demons, right? Like he was he was a gambler. Mm-hmm. He was uh, he had some vices that he was dealing with. So um, how did how did Tesla get started? How did he break into life as a uh, as a scientist? Well, his mother. Okay. Wait. His mom. Here comes proof. <laughs> there was a study. Hey, Cully, what do you know about Nicholas? Well, Tesla? he so he <laughs> he actually guy. he drew up plays in the dirt, like a like a quarterback. He um one at one point he was walking through a park in Budapest, and he just had a vision, and uh he took a stick out and he drew a diagram in the dirt. He drew a motor that was using rotating magnetic fields with alternating current um, when alternating currents were not a thing whatsoever. So he just, he invented it in a park because of a vision that he had at one point, which that I might, I might have to call cap on that. It might be something, this is a really nice story for him to tell people, but like for the first time he thought of it when he was walking in a park, you thought of the alternating current, or like, did you think about this in a lab? And then one day in the park, he pretended to to think about it so he could impress his friend. Sound like the uh, the Newton Apple story. I think over time, shit like that grows the folklore. Yeah, it is a better story. Uh, but then he he sailed to New York City in 1884. I, they, they say that like he arrived with four cents in his pocket. You hear that about everybody that. Like came to the United States with two dollars to their name, and that's it. Is that I? I feel like those are also exaggerated at times too. Like, what can what could you get in 1884 with four cents? Do you have enough to buy like your meal, your first meal? 
How you get a mill? How you get a mill with four cents back? And then, then I mean, I mean, I remember in the sixties, in the fifties and sixties, my mom and dad used to be like, soda pop was five cents. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so you go back even further than that. Yeah, you could probably get got it. You probably got you a nice little, maybe a loaf of bread, maybe. Was was it really four cents? They said they said four cents. Yeah, well, that's worth a dollar fourteen today with inflation. All right, so you oh, get maybe not. To, you yeah. go to McDonald's, you get a McDouble. Yeah, that's about you get exactly. A, you get a enough. meal. I guess you get a meal. Yeah. And then what? What do you? What's your next move? If you have four cents, you get to the United States in eighteen eighty four. You get a meal. Tough. I don't know. Like you don't know one. nobody. There's no internet. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. Like, what? Do you, I don't. You that's that's, that's some tough. shit. I think the first thing you do is you just, you, you just get exploited by somebody. There's definitely, <laughs> there's definitely no people that are walking around the harbors that are looking for new immigrants, to exploit them in some manner. That's probably the first thing that happens well, yeah, to most that's, people. That's what they did with the Irish in the Civil War. They just got them right off the boats. Yeah. There's, there was Sent probably like an, an entire uh, like field of, of business just set up around, okay, let's, let's get all these immigrants that work for nothing for us. We'll put them in a tenement, and they'll, they'll have to be happy when they get there. Um, but So, yeah, he got to the U.S. in 1884. And then, uh, so how did he start working for Thomas Edison? Because I've heard that he, he was recommended from Charles Batchelor, who he used to work for over in, in the old country. Charles Batchelor, who, uh, who knew Thomas Edison. So Tesla originally had a job in Paris in 1882, where he'd got to after avoiding uh, serving in the Austrian Empire's army mm-hmm. after escaping to the mountains and pretending to be a hunter. So he'd actually worked at the Continental Edison Company in Paris. So when he got to the United States, he was recommended on his way over. So even though he had four cents in his pocket, he did know he had a place to go at the end of it. So this is where it gets a little bit fucked up because he did find somebody who was ready to exploit him. It just so happens that that person was Thomas Edison. The Mm -hmm. Wizard of Menlo Park, Thomas Edison. You may recognize that name from uh, a gas station that's on the New Jersey Turnpike about 10 minutes outside of New York City. Now, fun fact, who attached keys to kites and tried to get electrocuted by lightning? Wasn't that Ben Franklin? Yeah. Yeah. You thought it was Thomas Edison? No, but a lot of people mix those people up. Okay, it was not. (laughs) I I don't know. I I think Edison might have recreated that. Uh, he covered it. He did a cover experiment. <laughs> he covered, he covered <laughs> it. <laughs> so he, uh, he, he found his exploiter, and that was Thomas Edison. And when he started working for Edison, Edison said, I'll give you 50 grand if you can, if you can improve my direct current invention that I'm using in my motors. And so a couple months later, Tesla shows up at, at uh, Edison's desk, and he's like, guess what, boss? Give me 50 grand. And Tesla said, when you become a full-fledged American, you will appreciate an American joke. And didn't pay him. Didn't pay up. (laughs) So Tesla said, fuck you, I quit. And then he started digging ditches. Respect. And a lot of people just use the whole, like, uh, ditch digger thing. As, you know, the world needs ditch diggers, too. Uh, I don't think that we actually do need people to go out and actually dig ditches anymore by hand but back then that was like a big big industry was getting into the ditch digging profession well because think about it sewage pipes and even like back then they were doing the um telegram lines that needed to be buried they actually stopped digging ditches because they put up uh electrical poles oh shit so think about it because back then the electrical lines weren't reliable enough to keep underground and mm-hmm. it was too much work to dig them up because there wasn't enough ditch diggers so it's better just to have them up already hmm. but now people argue that they should be back in the ground poles yeah big the big pole industry ruined the ditch digging profession mm. uh although that must be a tough job you're just given a shovel and just go out there every day 10 hours a day and start digging uh, but that's what 
That's what Tesla decided to do when Edison wouldn't pay up. As he had a bunch of Tesla had a bunch of inventions. He also wrote out a whole. I think he actually patented a design for a flying saucer using anti gravity, which hmm. I think is also used in the flat earther theories quite a bit. He invented a flying saucer. Yeah. Did it work? Well, that's a big. That's a big <laughs> part of having a flying saucer is it's got to fly. Hold on, man. I'm calling a cap on that one. He invented the flying saucer. Like that shit's been around since the biblical days. Like Ezekiel's will for year for thousands of years, it was thought to be like a saucer. Well, shape. I, I, he might not have invented the concept of a flying saucer, but I think what Billy's saying is that he he designed a flying saucer. Yeah, oh, that he, could potentially he fly. To, okay, I got you. But if you. it did, if it never actually took off, then I'd say that that a lot that of it was conceptual. Okay. That's that shit. Was what intrigues me about that whole uh, Bob Lazar thing is is his description of the technology, the alien technology, as he purports it to be. Um, he purports it to be a machine that creates gr- its own gravitational pull, hmm. and so and so the the theory behind it is. Uh, the, the 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 by the saucer or whatever the machine creates gravity and like warps the space around it and it and it kind of traverses the the space around it by bending oh, space, which is fucking fascinating. Oh, guys, to, I, to got, think I got caught by a hoax. There we go. There we go, what? Billy. I got caught by a hoax. Nikola Tesla never made a flying saucer. Okay, machine. thank you for admitting. All right, so Billy. Okay, well, sorry, you... I did research. No, I'm saying, I'm saying. Does anybody have like research? I'm saying thank you for, <laughs> for acknowledging <laughs> that you got got. I know, but. All right, so Billy, you, you know what you have to do now, right? Yes, I, I will start. Okay. <clears throat> Wait. Come on, Billy. More research. We're all waiting. Wait, I actually might be right. <laughs> no, see, this is where he gets in trouble because now <laughs> he's going to have to apologize is... <laughs> again. God damn it. Don't yeah. want, want Snopes. All right, Billy, stop. Just give up. I, I Let this one go. You let this one go. You almost had a big fish in being the first one to discover that the Tesla invented UFOs. But it's not, <laughs> it's not meant to be this time. Just let it go. Do your thing. Do your announcement. Uh, it's okay. He's, it's on, okay. he's on the fence. He doesn't want to no, commit. Let it go, Billy. <laughs> Billy, let it go. I'm telling you. I just let me... no, Billy. <laughs> he said, "He said, let me just look at one more thing." <laughs> uh, Tesla received his last pa- patent for a biplane designed of a vertical takeoff and landing, which gradually tilted through manipulation of the elevator devices in a flight until it was flying like a conventional plane. Tesla thought the plane okay, so he did have a flying machine that he designed. And it resembles the V-22 Osprey used by the U.S. military. What I got got by was the patented designs were actually of this guy called Otis T. Carr, who built a design that said to belong to Nikola Tesla. So Otis T. Carr lied and said that their, the craft that he designed was designed by Nikola Tesla. So Otis T. Carr is to blame. And he's a fraud. Did he invent the car? <laughs> he should have. He maybe he invented the elevator. Mm. Who the hell is Otis T. Carr? Actually, no. The elevator is one of those things that, that uh, oh, God. Th- Thomas Jefferson claims that he invented, <laughs> which is complete bullshit. L- let's, let's listen. This is Otis T. Carr's the first line of his Wikipedia, which just screams fraud. Otis T. Carr first emerged in the 1950s flying saucer scene in Baltimore, Maryland. A burgeoning <laughs> the scene, scene. The scene. The flying saucer scene in Baltimore, Maryland. It's, yeah, it's ground zero for just a lot of cool kids hanging out talking UFOs. Right? So he founded OTC Enterprise, a company that was supposed to advance and apply technology originally suggested by Nikola Tesla. The claim to be applying some of ideas of Tesla was quite common among exploiters of the flyer saucer community in the 1950s. For example, George Van Tassel's Integraton was supposed to be partially based on unspecified lore from Tesla. Basically, a bunch of people took Tesla's works and just sort of made their own uh, spin-off mythos. So I wonder why. I wonder why people saw him as being like a mark that you could take advantage of. I think it's because he was alt. 
He was like alt science. He, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He wasn't in it for like the money. He was just in it for like the advancement of technology. So he wasn't like he wasn't a businessman. I yeah. think he had a bunch of abstract works, but like Edison probably was like this, you know, establishment science. And these guys were like, we want some alt science. We want some Nikola Tesla. We want some guy who kind of went a little nuts and batty. And I think a lot of his, some of his inventions that Nikola Tesla made had a lot of implied uh, stuff that was conceptual and didn't actually make sense. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can design a whole time machine except, like, this little box where you turn the time back is in the center console and no one really actually knows what happens in that little box. But you designed the whole other parts of the vehicle correctly. Mm -hmm. So he also put up that, that giant tower in New York. Because he was an ideas guy, and he, he had this idea to connect every part of the United States, really the world, uh, by putting up um, a big tower. And so he convinced J.P. Morgan to fund. That's what it was. That was J.P. Morgan. I said Rockefeller. I meant J.P. Morgan. I'm sorry. But... Yeah, yeah. He, he convinced J.P. Morgan to fund a big-ass transmission tower that could be used to call up and talk to other people on the telephone. Um, so, and wasn't he trying to? I could be wrong, man. But wasn't he trying to like communicate or find some, um, uh, alien radio waves or some kind of? I, I, that's from my from my memory. Uh, I think he was trying to also, um, detect some kind of alien presence, like radio waves or something, some kind of waves. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. Um, it's, it sucks that he was just such a bad business guy. It sounds like he was everything that I've read about him makes him seem like he was he was what we think of when we think of scientists, you know, just like a guy that loves to do experiments and to think abstractly. And some of the other science, as we've kind of like speculated a little bit on the show, um, there are people that come up with cool ideas, and then there are people that say them loudest that get all the credit for them. Feel like that. I I do feel like after reading more about him, Tesla just kind of got boned. But he he needed a backbone. He was kind of a you can't let people walk all over you because word gets around town. So you let you let Thomas Edison get away with stiffing you for fifty grand, and next thing you know, the rest of the world is just stealing all your ideas, and you don't get the recognition that that you deserve till you know long after you're dead. He was also a weirdo because he like he claims all these visions and. Uh, another vision that he claimed was that there was a white pigeon that used to come visit him, like a, like the same bird, and the same bird would bring him good ideas whenever he saw it. So uh, he just kind of liked to, he liked to embellish things a little bit. So one time uh, he said that the white pigeon flew through his hotel window, and um, the bird came to tell him that he was dying, and uh, then the pigeon died in his arms, and at that point. Tesla knew that his life's work was done and that he could die peacefully. Never found the pigeon, though. So probably, probably made that part up. Yeah, he, also, he invented that Tesla coil thing. Yeah. Do you guys know what that is? Vaguely familiar. They have a lot of science classrooms. You touch them and your hair goes up. Mm -hmm. Is that related to the giant ball that makes all the static? Yeah, that's, I think that's what it is. Those use Tesla coils? Yeah, I think it's something that's a little more looks cool than has any actual application. Mark Twain liked to mess around with it. Yeah. So Tesla actually did make the cover of Time Magazine in uh, 1931. You know who else made the cover of Time Magazine, by the way? Donald Trump. H-Man. Yeah. yeah. Both correct. Both correct. The PFT was aiming a little higher on the evil scale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't it didn't been no Bin Laden did not make you know he he made the cover when he got killed yeah but he was the not big, he was not person of the year he got the big X because Hitler got the big X yeah that was that's pretty that's that was pretty like alpha time put the big X on these guys Bin Laden did not make the cover they said although the the person of the year award goes to the person that had the most impact on the world positive or negative this year we're not gonna do I think they gave it to to George W. Bush that year, I think. What, 2001? Yeah, I, th I believe so. They just said, like... Well, I thought... Didn't they give it to Giuliani? Oh, did they? I thought they might have. He was America's mayor at that point. He was. It was... 
It was Ju. Well, wait, there's two. Oh, so he so Bush got it two thousand. Okay. Oh one, Giuliani. Yeah, oh one was Giuliani. Who's oh two? Oh oh two thousand was GW person of the year two thousand two was the whistleblowers who are a group of three women that I have no idea what they did. Well, that was, uh, the Dixie that, Chicks. <laughs> uh, it might have been Enron. Who all? Oh, you no. know who 99 was? Who are these people? Who is 99, Cole? Jeff Bezos. Oh, shit. No really? way. That feels way too early for him to be... Like, bookstores were already a thing. What was he doing in 99? Amazon was was just starting to take off. I feel like in ninety nine. That's what, yeah, that's what I feel like. Yeah. Colleen Rowley of the FBI, Sharon Watkins of Enron, Cynthia Cooper of WorldCom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so WorldCom and Enron. <laughs> Enron. So are Enron's. A, Enron's. A remember that. Yeah. So wait, are these people like these whistleblowers? Are they? Are they what? Are they were they actually legit or were they like part of the people? Who are these people? No, the people that, that blew the whistle on WorldCom and Enron were saying, hey, the, uh, the, the company is committing massive, massive fraud. Oh. And so then they got investigated, and both companies ended up collapsing. And so that's like what it was about? Losing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Wait, wait. Yeah. Was, was what's-her-face? So this loots back the last show, because Enron's vice president was what's-her-face's father. Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah, Elizabeth Holmes' father was Enron's vice president. Yeah. So was Elizabeth Holmes ever a person of the year? Of the year? No. No, I highly doubt that. And then 2000... Uh, two, she, was, she was at, like, the Time 100 Most Influential People. But I don't oh, think she, she was on Forbes, but she had a fake Time magazine with her face on it, I'm pretty sure. Like, for her own That's motivation. So that, that was Trump. Yeah. Trump had, I think, a fake Time magazine. Oh, that was Trump? Yeah, that he hung up in his golf club. Oh. Uh, so this is crazy. Uh, 2005, Good Samaritans won Time Magazine's Person of the Year. You know who was on the cover to represent Good Samaritans? <laughs> was it that bitch fraud? Bono, yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, you're right. And Melinda my, Gates. My big, my, my greatest enemy in the world. Why is Bono? That? I, for, I forgot you don't fuck with Bono. Because yeah. Bono hasn't done shit. Bono, like, he, he parachutes into to photo shoots once every five years. He's like, we've changed the world through music. And it's like, give me a fucking break, dude. He thinks that he cured AIDS. Bono actually thinks that he cured AIDS. Can you prove he hasn't? I, I personally do not have AIDS right now, so maybe. <laughs> but he also uploaded his entire Bono, fucking Bono album. Bono won PFT. <laughs> he, had, he uploaded his entire album onto my iPod back in like 2008 without my permission. So that kind of balances it out. Yeah, you know, everyone... Is ends up on the cover of these magazines kind of is he part of you too yeah, yeah. in the name yeah that's okay that's, that's it. yeah you too bono they, did grow I, up in a war zone though i think that was like a collaboration between apple and the u.s government to like prime people for shit that you just we can just do it and you can't say anything about it they, yeah well, no that you was an invasion draw, of my liberty you could draw a correlation between that u2 album and having to show an ID and a vaccine passport to go into a bar in New York City. Hey, there's yeah. there's Look, a strong case to be for, made. Hey, First they came Big for G, my man. iPod, and we, I said nothing. We almost, we, almost, we almost went the whole pod without saying vaccine. We almost <laughs> Dude, did it. We time, did it. person of the year 2009, Bill Gates and Bono on the front Damn. with Melinda Gates. They were Is telling time us, in cahoots? They, they were telling us the whole time. They're hiding in plain sight. First, you know, I, I got I to gotta be convinced about this Bill Gates evil thing, man. Because <laughs> I... I, I I, I got get I think being a billionaire on his face is kind of you know it's kind of it's selfish. But when I look into Bill Gates, dog, like he does a lot of good shit, and I, I'm just like I'm I'm open to being convinced. Like I'm open. Well, here's what people will say, because I've also looked yeah. into it. I think he's a nerd mm -hmm. and he's selfish, and uh, I he does not live his life the way that I would live my life. Um, <laughs> that's true for the other 7 billion people God, and, and he also <laughs> is involved with the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing too so he's, he's probably a bad dude but in terms so we, we do have evidence of that yeah but, it, but in terms of him actively trying to kill off billions of people the people who are making that argument uh, 
and trying to make it truthfully are either very misinformed or they're um or they're just like purposely lying about what his plans are to make it seem like he's evil because they just have an axe to grind against him personally. So I don't he he's the only time that he's ever said anything about like um depopulate the world or whatever, we've gotten into this actually on past podcasts. All those quotes are from him talking about how uh the world in certain uh countries is built to function optimally at certain levels of population. Just like stating facts and stating like Agreed. if the wor- if we continue on this path of increasing the population and developing nations year after year after year, there will be lots and lots of death because we won't have the resources to get everybody fed, uh medical supplies, clean water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just common knowledge that declining birth rates are a sign of progress in any developing country. As countries develop, birth rate drops. That happens all across the board, everywhere. If it doesn't happen, then that leads to very, very bad issues in terms of infrastructure, and it will eventually lead to a lot of death and famine and all that stuff. So I've, I've looked at it a lot. I don't think that Bill Gates is like a, a fucking evil. So my billionaire says that I got to start reproducing because the birth rate's going way too low. Yeah, it's that's your that's, billionaire. that's my billionaire. Yeah. My billionaire, Mr. Musk, tells me that I got to, you know, get to reproduce. No, I'm just kidding. Get to fucking. <laughs> that's what that's the platform but he's it's, running. But it's on. so funny that you have two of these dudes and one's talent saying that that another one saying that we're going to have two little people. Yeah. I that's the thing with Elon Musk is he always looks like he pretends to know exactly what the world's going to look like 75 years in the future. He knows exactly what it's going to be. But it's funny that we're choosing billionaires to listen to. Yeah, so, um, so Arian, New York Times reported uh, that Bill Gates met with Jeffrey Epstein many, many times, even knowing Jeffrey Epstein's past. And you can, you can extrapolate that his wife did not want Bill Gates hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein and Bill Gates continued to meet with Jeffrey Epstein. Now you can, you can do the math and figure out maybe why his wife wouldn't want Bill Gates hanging out with Epstein. And you can also do the math on maybe why Bill Gates would want to continue hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, despite the fact that his wife asked not to. So probably my, my official, uh, my official judgment on Bill Gates nerd Definitely scumbag, possibly pedophile, not evil underground villain trying to destroy four billion people off the face of the earth. All I'm saying is Melinda left him. Yep. I would he, I'm I'm kind of team Melinda in all this. Who's but, Melinda married now? Another I, science teacher? I don't know. I uh, I tried to hit on her right when she got divorced. Smart. Melinda. Yeah. Yo, Melinda. Come on the podcast. Yeah, Melinda, come on the podcast. Bunch and of bunch of bachelors. PFT should should Time Magazine be canceled? They've only the troops have only won two of these. I saw that. Yeah, they gave it to the American soldier in two thousand three. People forget what a weird time that was in, in America, where it's like if you weren't actively giving a hand job to a soldier every day of the week, you were you were pro terrorism. It was really really strange. It was like it was so over the top. They've given it to the troops less times than they gave it to Stalin. Well, That's sad. Do you know that you've won a Times Magazine? Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at the same list as you, Billy. Yeah, you, you've won. <laughs> yeah, it's you, been long yeah, over You too. It's been too long since they gave it to us. And, and 06. 2006, representing individual content creators on the World Wide Web. I feel like we're co- content creators are having a moment right now, aren't we? Yeah. <sighs> We're doing something. Give it back to me. I want it. I want it more. Who's who's one? Probably Greta Thunberg is going to get it. She already won it. She's content creator too. Low, low key, I'm just saying that I think that was a Mickey Mouse year for Greta to win. It was like 2019. Like shouldn't have been like. Oh no! It was right before. What? Huh. Right? No. It was probably... Uh, You're saying a COVID title? Yeah, Anthony Fauci retroactively should have gotten it for 2019 for all his work developing the, the yeah. coronavirus, right? <laughs> yeah. Like that, that's when he was putting the finishing touches. That's when he was like just carving out the edges in the lab. 
Yeah, we uh, the Ebola fighters got it. I'm not trying to. Uh, the, I'm just saying they played in a weaker era than the COVID fighters. Like they, yeah, why they... the defense <laughs> wasn't as stout. Yep. Big T, do you think that? Why the fuck did Merkel get it? Do you think that? Yeah, that's a good question. Why? That's another Mickey Mouse year. What year was that? Fifteen. Because she uh, recognized for her leadership in the Greek debt crisis and European migrant crisis. I thought it was going to be a, a year or two later just because she hated Trump. And that's why they were going to give it to no, her. Trump won it the next year. Yeah. yeah. But also, Big T, like, literally every other leader in the world. Now, like, I, without, without exception. Hated yeah, but she, but she made a show of it. She did. She did. Yeah, that was kind <laughs> of her so, thing. And yeah. so time... I agree. Went, yeah. <laughs> now, this is... This is Okay, so I'm trying to actually think of what what foreign leaders liked Trump, like openly said it. And to my no disrespect, I'm not lumping him in, but Kim Jong no, Kim no, Jong Un loved that's him. Dumb. That's a dumb thing to say. He loved him. They loved no, each a other. Lot of, a lot of African leaders thought he was dope. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Source. I'm, I'm gonna need a source on that one. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I remember. I remember uh, reading Putin, an article. Putin loved him, right? No, that's fake yeah. news. What are you talking? No. They- Putin loves uh, Joe Biden, saying we're not gonna do anything if they invade Ukraine. Okay. That's who he loves. Okay, that's yes, probably. The Israelis love Trump. I remember that. Oh yeah, Netanyahu. Can you, can Netanyahu we- loved him, but now. Netanyahu hates him. Uh, now, can we take a second each other's shit list. and appreciate what would have happened if Donald Trump said what Joe Biden said that has barely been covered in the media? Yeah, dude, we're about to get uh, drafted. What? Big T. Which How part? old are you, Big T? 24. Do you have flat feet? I don't know. He got a, He's right? got, you got lightning quick reflexes, though. <laughs> I do. Army yeah. wants... Can't I get drafted now? <laughs> yeah. No, no, not no yet, actually not but... yet. No, you can't. Actually, Big T. There's, there's like, there's an open and honest discussion that we can have. What is a bigger infringement of your personal liberty? I look forward to this question. Uh, having to sign, having to show a proof of vaccination before you go into a bar, or being mandated to fill out a card the when latter, you turn eighteen. For sure. Saying I will go fight in a whatever war you tell me. I to am do. not pro either of those things. Okay. I am staunchly anti both. Yeah, anti draft. Uh, yeah. Okay. I I tend to agree with that. I mean, it's probably not a big surprise if you've ever heard me talk about anything. But like, I don't think that you should be able to for like the biggest infringement of liberty that we could possibly have took place back in like the Vietnam era. Where I agree. With just you. like okay, uh, you're going to go fight a war halfway around the world against poor farmers because some guy in a think tank in in washington dc said that if vietnam becomes a communist state then this the the country next to it then laos is going to become communist next thing you know we're all going to be communists in the world yeah, so, no, you're not going to find me lobbying for the draft yeah okay oh right, well, well you, you asked me the, rules... the other week and so I, that just occurred to me that that's a that's a pretty big one right there too i agree do we really think that um Albert Einstein deserves Man of the Century. Oh yeah, he deserves more. Think so? Arian loves yeah. Albert Einstein. Without a doubt. Do you like GPS, fan? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I give it to you. I give it to you. I g- I'll give him the century. Without you know what? We need to just remind people of all the stuff that Albert Einstein did, as it relates to our everyday life right now, and the impact that he has. You're, you're on computers. You like GPS. Um... When you're setting your your distance parameters for those of you who are on Tinder. You would not be able to do that <laughs> without Albert Einstein, right? I, I think I think I think there's one, and this is just my opinion, right? I think there's one brain that could rival his relative to the time, and that was Newton. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't think there's anybody that was close to as brilliant as Albert Einstein. It was Tesla? Are we putting is Tesla anywhere up there? You think? I don't. He's up there. He's up there, but I really think there's a yeah. tier list. I think there's a tier list, and it goes Albert. Newton, and then there's like you know, and take your pick of of other kind of scientists. But those two, I like. I I just find out you'd have to convince me that those two have have rivals intellectually. It was just man, the, that shit is impressive what they did. Okay, so, um, I I want to just get back to Tesla again real quick because he had a like he was a very a weird guy, and it, I think probably a lot of that goes along with the fact that he was brilliant. He was an inventor. He had 
his mind worked in different ways, but he had these things that he became obsessed with. His contributions, though, before you go get into his quirks, mm -hmm. his contributions were, were massive too. Like tele, um, wireless communication, like that's that's him. You know what I mean? Like he he pushed the boundaries of all of that. Like he he was brilliant in his own right. Yeah, I feel like we probably glossed over that just a little bit when we jumped into the Time Magazine thing. But he he did get that tower built in New York City, which was the basis for wireless communications. So um, that that's obviously obviously massive, and he was. He was a visionary when it came to, to establishing that. Um, some of his quirks, he had to have 18 napkins on the table every time he would eat. 18 napkins. That was like mm. a thing. I, I'm not saying I'm brilliant at all, um, but that's a quirk that I have with napkins. I can't reuse the same napkin. Like, I, I have a napkin, I'll use it once, and I'll, and I'll throw it away. And then I'll, I'm not even OCD like that. It's just a weird little thing. I don't just like one side... And you can't use the other side? Yeah, Is I don't know what it, I, just, I, I think that's I, pretty I, I, normal. But I, no, I'm talking about the end of the dinner. I got like seven or eight dirty napkins. Are yeah, you talking that's, paper that's napkins or reusable? Paper. Yeah. Yeah. If it's cloth, if it's cloth, you know, I'll, I'll work around the edges mm -hmm. and then get to the middle. But if, if I have options, it's, you know, it's... No, I agree with that. Pump, yeah. and, pump and dump. Let's give, let's give a, a quick summation of what he actually Wait, hang on. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not done with his weird stuff yet. Okay. So he had Was to he have, a freak? He had to have he 18 horny, like napkins. Einstein? I don't think he was a freak, but he had a violent aversion against the earrings of women. And if he saw a pearl on a woman, he would go crazy. I yeah, he he's hated a freak. Him on bikes, too. Like he, <laughs> he, hated, he hated jewelry. He hated earrings on women. I don't, I, he, just one of those things, I guess. He probably just had a bad experience when he's he was a probably child. Probably a freak. Probably a freak. Yeah, so he, in, he invented the Tesla coil, the first hydroelectric power plant at Niagara Falls, fluorescent light bulb, a magnifying transmitter which would light bulbs half a mile away, a remote control, the first x-ray image, but the work ended up in a fire, the radio, papers lost in a fire, test line turbine, his favorite invention with 98% efficiency, intended for renewable sources of energy such as fluids but still not commercially used, the induction motor for vacuums and blow dryers, and the radio-controlled boat that could sail without humans on it. He could steer with radio signals. Can we go back a second? You said this guy invented the radio, but they just conveniently lost all the, the things that proved yeah, that? Yeah, it burned down. A lot of... How do we know that? He, know. he applied for the patent, and then the, the building that all of the stuff was in burnt down before he could get the patent to go through. So then Manicola, I think his name was... Something like that. Whoever actually has the patent for the radio, uh, basically was like, "Ha ha, sucks to be you," and took the patent and ran with it. I think this guy. I think back then there was a lot of people like thieving, arson. Yeah, because there was there was like you could just burn shit and then there would be no trail of it. Yeah, it's it was so easy to get away with crimes back then. Yeah, it's like that thing where it's like if you got away, if you got caught for a crime before like 1960, you're an idiot. And so, like, yes, exactly. And it, there's a bunch of people that um, are making the claim that that actually Tesla was a much, much more brilliant mind than Edison. And you could you could make that claim because Edison, if Edison was good at something, it was he knew how to market himself. He was like a great, great promoter of his own brand. And Tesla was just in it just because he loved to do science and he loved inventions um, and that sort of thing. Fascinating. But Edison had a really good understanding of, okay, I've got, I'll hire a bunch of smart people that work for me, and then I'll have them help me with projects. I'll use their ideas, their intellectual property. Then I'm the one that gets to go to the patent office and say, hey, it's your boy. T hey, it's TE again. Got another banger for you. And then he gets an immediate patent on it. And so that's why he ended up with like a thousand patents. And, uh, and Tesla ended up with about 300. But Tesla was all straight from his brain. Edison had a whole staff of people that was helping him out. So he almost made Mark Twain poop his pants. Turns yes. out they were pals. Okay. Yeah, Twain and Tesla loved each other. The writer was fascinated with technology and often spent time in the scientist's lab. Tesla wanted to find the most efficient electricity, so he constructed a machine that, stimulate, that simulated earthquake. It was a high-frequency oscillator. After every experiment, the machine would shake his building in Manhattan as well as the surrounding buildings. One day, Tesla invited Twain to his office. The writer was known to have digestive problems. Tesla asked Twain to stand in the middle of the oscillator when it was on. The writer managed to be there for as long as 90 seconds, but then he ran to the toilet. 
<laughs> he hit him with a brown noise simulator. <laughs> I think he literally just shook the shit out of him. How come we don't have any of uh, we don't have that invention nowadays? It's like something that you can make. I should. It's an oscillator. It's 2022. I should be able to like point my phone at somebody and make them crap themselves. <laughs> I bet you the government's got that without their. <laughs> They probably do. There's, a, there's probably like some sort of ray, some sort of energy ray that they can shoot. Imagine the power you would have if you can just, excuse me, make somebody poop themselves. I feel like it would be similar to the lasers that you have to use for your kidney stones. Yeah. Well, no, I don't have to use them, fortunately. Oh, They're not, but you know what I mean? Yeah, if I had to. Like they just shake, shake it out of you. Just vibrate until the, the crystals dis- dissolve. Or as yeah. Billy actually correctly told me, you ride a roller coaster. And vibrate at just the right frequency to destroy your own kidney stone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He believed sex disturbs a man at his work. I can't think of many great inventions behind which are married men. Facts. <laughs> really? He, he said, like, if you get laid too much, you won't be able to invent anything? Yeah. Sounds like something like a big time Verge would say. Like, he was an incel. 100%. There like, we go. Newton. So. Newton and hundred percent, hundred percent. Newton and Tesla. Yeah, were dude, incels. this guy was. Well, he was a vol cell. How do you know that? It was voluntary. How do you know? Maybe he was an incel, but then he just he he owned it, huh. and he was like, you know what? I've gone thirty five years without getting laid. I'm gonna take ownership of this, and I don't. You know what? I don't even want to have sex. Hmm. Yeah, he seemed like. I mean, do you think it would be fun at like a kickback? Tesla. Yeah. No, eh. no, I don't think so at all. I don't think he'd be cool to chill with. He'd get a couple. I don't think he, no, I don't, I, I think he would probably look down on everybody that he was hanging out with. Like he couldn't have a conversation. He's, he's the guy that's in the corner in that meme. And he's like, they don't know I'm inventing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know I'm inventing an alternate current. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know my current's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that he. I don't think he was a guy that would be much fun to hang out with. Maybe fun to like work with in lab mm. because he had such a crazy, crazy brain. But no, not not fun to deal with. Yeah, the reasoning behind these behaviors remain a myth. So he had a lot of weird stuff, and everyone thought he had OCD. That's what people, probably. Yeah, they said he used to count his steps everywhere he would go. Yeah, which that's probably a sign of OCD. Yeah. Occasionally, I'll do that, though, if I'm interested, like, how many steps is it? Um, mm. But that might be, maybe I have a, I get a touch of that. OCD is a weird one because a lot of the little things that happen to people that people associate, like, the super cleanliness and stuff, mm-hmm. actually, for most people, are the opposite once it progresses over a certain, so, like, as children, they'll be super neat and super freaked out. About knees and stuff, but then they'll literally just go opposite once they get older. They can't handle. They flip. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else about Nikola Tesla? He invented the cell phone, the technology for a cell phone, like a hundred years before. Yeah, the, the wire, wireless tower. Mm-hmm. He okay. actually like the statement he makes about them and explaining them is actually like dead fucking accurate. What does he say? Um, when wireless is perfectly applied, the whole earth will be converted to a huge brain, which in fact it is, all things being particles of a real and rhythmic whole. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear one another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite intervening distances of thousands of miles. Wow. And the instruments through which we shall be able to do this will be amazingly simple compared with our present telephone. A man will be able to carry one in his vest pocket. Yeah, he said that these wireless telephones would be the size of his watch. Nailed it. And then the guys who screwed him out of millions and millions of dollars ended up paying his rent at the New Yorker Hotel for the last nine years of his life because they felt bad. It was like oh, yeah. their, their sympathy. They He's, were like, sorry. right down the street. Is it the same one? I don't know. He was racking up the bill down there. Yeah, I would be getting room service every night. Yeah, back back in the day, I understand why they take credit so seriously nowadays because you could just run up tabs and walk out on them. Like Tesla yeah. did it for how many years? Nine. Hmm. I don't get how permanent residents of a hotel work. Do you just pay like a flat rate, like rent, basically? You can probably work it out for like month by month. Yeah. Get a better rate. Because I was going to say, if you paid like, 
okay, at the New Yorker, let's say now, it's like $200, $200 a night. That's a lot in rent. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. the same hotel, by the way. It was built in 1949. Nice. I also didn't realize he died so recently. When did he die? 1945. Very long ago. Very, very, very recent. But in terms of, in my brain, I'm this joking. was. I'm just, I'm just joking, man. No, no, no. <laughs> but in my, in my brain, he was like a early 1800s dude. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh. I'm, no, one's, no one said I was smart about this, but. All right. Well, shout yeah, out. That's crazy. He Nikola believed in Tesla. free electricity. That's probably why. I do too. Yeah, but who makes it? What does that mean? <laughs> Free electricity. I'm with that too. The sun. Um, also, I can. <laughs> yeah. Let, tell you what. Let's just. Should we want to skip to voicemails? Yeah. Want to do some voicemails? Did we talk yeah. about the actual conspiracy? Like I've been in and out, and I apologize. But did we talk about the FBI seizing most of his assets upon his death? No. Let's go. Go off. No. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's. The, the conspiracy behind it was um, that he had the the specs, I guess it would be called, uh, to building a powerful particle beam weapon known as the Death Ray, uh, which during World War II, you could see why, why that would be raising some flags, mm-hmm. um, especially since his, I believe it's his nephew, um, was a Serbian ambassador, and upon his death, his uh, Tesla's will uh, gave all of his estate to this uh, Serbian American. Serbian American. So the government thought that he might be playing both sides of the fence, and that would take this potential death ray um, schematics over uh, to the other side. Um, but most of these. Um, Obviously, the the FBI picked them up, and they were they were blacklisted immediately. You could not, uh, or classified rather, um, and most of the files were declassified in 2018. There was no death ray in there, but I for sure am not going to be the guy who's like, yeah, the government definitely declassified everything that they found. Um, so it remains to be seen. A uh, uh, death ray alone, I mean, that gets people going. Yeah, I mean, any kind of, anytime you call it the death ray. That's, yeah, that's going to send up some red flags. So- also, um, the scientists. Let me let me make sure I have this part of it. Um, according to the declassified files, Dr. John G. Trump reported that his analysis showed Tesla's efforts to be primarily of a speculative, uh, philosophical, and promotional character, and so the papers did not include new sound workable principles or methods for realizing such results. And uh, John G. Trump is the younger brother of Donald J. Trump's father, Fred Trump, which Fred Trump's a very funny name. So Mm -hmm. uh, how, how much of this death ray does the Trump family know about? And are they suppressing the American people's knowledge about such? Well, you know, he once paid an overdue hotel bill by giving the managers a small wooden box, which he said contained a working model of his famous death beam. Yeah, so he tried to pay a bill with the death beam and he told the manager of the hotel to never open it. Listen, if I had a death beam, I wouldn't be paying bills ever again. I wouldn't also be arming the people I owe money with with their own mini death rays. (laughs) But the fearful managers never opened the box. I have a real question. <laughs> How stupid were people like a hundred years ago? Because it seems Pretty like stupid. it seems like Still the, are. the app, but it seems much more pronounced in in the not so recent past. I mean, how do you think how many of are... our coworkers keep getting their accounts hacked because they're clicking on DMs and giving away all their information? Not a not a bad point. Wait, Big T, are you saying that people are dumber now or that they were dumber no, 100 years ago? No, they're way dumber 100 years ago. Well, yeah. I, I thought that Nikola Tesla designed a UFO about 15 minutes ago. That's true. Again, not a bad point. Um, <laughs> which you might have also stumbled upon. So, Billy was right, by the way. Tesla was a Valso. He was, he was a virgin his entire life. He was six foot six in the 1890s, which is that actually yeah, might pretty... be too tall. He should have hooped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tall as hell. Uh, 
and he just yeah he he stayed celibate his entire life and he said billy, that, are you billy are you an incel or a vol cell you're a vol cell right i'm i'm just he, i'm just celebrating he respects women <laughs> <laughs> I'm just selling all the time. Oh, just one celebrate. one other thing for Tesla, dude invented the remote control. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mr. Tesla. That's big. It's massive. People don't people don't talk about that enough. Um, so that's Tesla. Let's get in some voicemails real quick. Just as a society, we need to respect Tesla a little bit more. You think he'd be pissed off that his his names on cars that sometimes don't work? Probably. By the way, that's Cole, you got to get fact checked on that. That was a traditional uh, callback. Like many. To, for 25% of the entire fleet? That is a typical uh, recall for newly produced models mm. of cars. But they weren't all newly produced. But that's typical. Like the worst, the worst recall. I'm not saying it was the worst recall in history. I'm saying I, I don't recall another recall where 25% of the active cars on the, on the road had to be recalled. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I know GMC had a bad one in the early 2000s. The tor- no, wait, no, that's true. Was it Firestone? There was a tire recall in the early 2000s, too, that really yeah, fucked a lot. Yeah, Goodyear, Firestone, like the Ford, Ford, they're blown up. The Ford Cruise Control had 14.9 million recalls. Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. I could imagine in not necessarily all. I don't know why I'm standing Elon Musk this episode. Me either. I do. I I do. Why? Because he. (laughs) You didn't exactly fact check me. You love standing cats that are. have controversial opinions. Which, Which of his opinions do you think I'm a fan of? I think you like he's he's more of uh, he's libertarian leaning and I think you're you're left leaning but you you enjoy a lot of liberty you enjoy entertaining a lot of libertarian thought especially when it comes I think well, you're more physically conservative than you'd like well not you'd like to live but then, then I, like to I let think on. yeah yeah facts anyway so I need ten thousand dollars <laughs> to create a gigantic frog. Yep, we should do it. Sweet. Give Billy his 10000 bucks. Let's do voicemails, though. You, you should have made that shit on NFTs already, right? True. Oh, oh speaking of which, did you see the shit with OBJ? I don't know how true it is, but it was funny. Oh, I about mean, the funny, crypto? Funny. Yeah, he, he had his contract in crypto, and since, it's, since Bitcoin has been devalued so much, like his contract isn't really worth that much right now. Well, I saw that, what yeah. they did was, is they're paying him the cash amount at the time of buying Bitcoin. the crypto so actually mm-hmm. so he got technically if his recent paycheck hopefully because rovell was the one who did that math yeah so i don't know i'm going off of what uh our reoccurring guest joey pump pump greek last name <laughs> that i can't pronounce said <laughs> that he was getting the money then buying the bitcoin and then getting it so he wasn't actually getting paid in bitcoin he was, he was just buying Bitcoin. But I think they but, were doing it. <laughs> yeah. He would still, he would, even if he was doing it that way, that's just one extra step to having the same, not as much money. Mm-hmm. But then, like, no, no, no. you're still converting it to dollars. But, like, it's, what it's if, still a conversion. if it was actually going by, like, the time of his paychecks and, like, this paycheck, he was getting it at the current value, yeah. then it would go up. That's, that's what he, that's Correct. what he got. So he got his paycheck in Bitcoin, whatever the amount of, Bitcoin. Wait, 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 hold on. Why would it go up if the, if the value is down? Okay, so, no so he would get it, more Bitcoin for his money this right. time around because the price is lower. But so the conversion the rate. Cash, but if he's getting the cash value every time he's paid and then he buys Bitcoin, what they're saying is because the, like, if he's getting the cash equivalent or, or the cash from whatever the NFL is paying him, that's still the same because the dollar hasn't gone in uh so so okay that makes sense so what you're saying is he's not getting he's he's getting the cash value of bitcoin at the time yes well no the cash value of whatever the nfl is paying him and then he's buying however much bitcoin that is it's more what i'm saying their their metric is the 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 value of bitcoin at the time no no yes he's getting five let's he's he's getting five dollars every game check let's say and then right. that $5 is buying $5 of Bitcoin at the time. 
Well, that doesn't what? So it's more okay. So the value is lower right now. So it's getting more Wait, Bitcoin. With time about. So what does that have to do? So wh why is why is why is the contract requested in Bitcoin then? Because if that's the case, you just get paid dollars and then buy Bitcoin and leave the Rams out of it. That makes no sense. But it was more of a promotional yeah, thing with FTX who paid him seven figures to do well, that. That, that, that deal. makes sense on. That makes sense on his end because yeah. it, his contract was like almost a league minimum. But what I'm saying is in order for that to even, this would be even be a conversation, the Rams would have to be paying him out either in Bitcoin or the value of Bitcoin for this to even be a relevant conversation. Yeah, I right. Agree. But it was just promotional. He was getting Bitcoin, but for the cash value. Yeah. But the value of Bitcoin, whatever the market value at the time was, which is it's, Exponential, me, not exponential, me, but it's but it's definitely going trending trending downward. So yeah. it, he so he didn't get more. So I think at the start of it, he got seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth, right? But at but it's not that same value is not worth seven hundred fifty thousand dollars anymore. It's right. it's like four hundred or something like that. But it it it'll it'll keep going down. So he he announced in November that he planned to convert his salary for this NFL season into Bitcoin. I don't even think the Rams are involved. Okay, well then that's yeah. Then yeah. that's just, uh, definitely it's just promotional. A yeah, it's just definitely a marketing mm -hmm. ploy. Yeah. So he's getting yeah. paid by some, some company, crypto bro, crypto yeah. bro. Speaking of Ravel, did you see his uh his tweet yesterday about the Rams and the home Super I Bowl? I did. I did. Yeah, we were, we reported yeah. that exclusively in part of my take that he that the uh, Rams would be the first team ever to have a home Super Bowl. Yeah. And then Schefter immediately afterwards said the Rams will be the first team to ever play a home NFC championship game followed by a home Super Bowl. Pulling his nuts out. Sorry, Ravel. There, is, there, is there Schefter beef? You got there, Schefter beef? No, I mean, we're always like, we're monitoring Schefter. We're actively <laughs> monitoring him because he's, <laughs> he needs to be kept in check sometimes, but I don't have a real problem with him. I have a problem with if he ever starts to act like he is a big J journalist. That's that's not what Adam Schefter is. He's he is a uh, an information conduit conduit, and he will conduit the information. He will conduct the information, pass it along as he sees fit to keep himself in the information loop. So he'll you know if there's an agent who's representing a, a player that has a contract coming up in two years that Schefter wants to be the scoop or the source of the scoop, um, and the first to report that. What he'll do is he'll make a big deal out of reporting this agent's other contracts that he gets for other players and shining as positively a light or as positive a light as possible on those other contracts to make the agent look good. So that way, down the line, the agent feeds him all the other information. So, and he does the same thing with teams too. He'll carry water for certain teams if he wants to get the, information from them. What was the player he just did that for? Jimmy Garoppolo. Like no, 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 for something that was, like, really bad. Like, he, he leaked the story that, like, his his girlfriend was hitting him, and then the story came out, and it was, like, the complete opposite. Oh, there was a player that he talked about. Um, shoot, who was that? I feel like it was a player on the Chiefs this week, and they said that, like, he, he smashed a vacuum cleaner or something like that. Oh, it oh, was, was it? the linebacker. But I don't, know, I don't know the story behind that, so I could be, I could be getting it wrong. Yeah, he, this one was a couple months ago. He was, like, on TV, like, pounding the desk, like, no, this is what happened. And then it came out, and that story just kind of died. Oh, there. yeah, yeah, that one. Um, what was that? It was a couple months ago. My brain just doesn't retain information. Yeah, I can't. Well, that's the thing. I like, got it out of the news cycle so quick. But he was like on TV and then like the story slowly, the real truth. I think TMZ got the real truth out and it was just like, ah, boy, <laughs> was he like suspended a day or am I making that up? I'm not he sure. Well, get... There was a whole like Bruce Allen thing where he referred to the, uh, the president of the Washington football team as being Mr. Editor. And... Dalvin Cook. Was it Dalvin Cook? Was it Dalvin Cook? Um... Yeah, I think that's right. Yes. Because hey, Dalvin yo. Cook was like involved in like an abuse lawsuit. Yeah, it thing. was. It, it was it was the Viking. Yes. Yeah. And there was the video and it was with the police officer woman. Yeah. He was like adamant about it. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, Adam Adam Schefter issued a statement on air regarding his initial reporting to the Dalvin Cook domestic abuse and extortion allegations saying that's a reminder to slow down. Like, yeah, no big deal. Just I do that every episode. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Um, so here was here was Schefter's tweet last weekend. 
During the second half of the season, Jimmy Garoppolo simultaneously has raised his value to both the 49ers and to other teams in the offseason trade market. 49ers would not be where they are today without him. So that's not breaking news. That's not journalism. That's Adam Schefter either scratching the back of Jimmy's agent, who also happens to represent Tom Brady, so that he can get any other Tom Brady news that comes out. Or it's Adam Schefter doing the 49ers front office a favor, talking about how great Jimmy G is and how his offseason trade value has gone way, way up so that they can get better picks, whatever it might be. Uh, better assets for Jimmy Garoppolo. Schefter would be an traded. amazing uh, sports information director at a college, like just pumping out nothing but positive news and like uh, stopping people from saying anything negative. The Baghdad Bob. He'd be so good at that job. That guy was so funny. That's another member of that guy. Baghdad Bob, the, uh, the information minister in Iraq during the second Iraq war. As like the U.S. troops were rolling into Baghdad, this guy in his little beret was like standing out in uh in the streets of Baghdad being like, We are doing a great job of fighting the Americans. We're dominating them. They will never be able to take over Baghdad. Meanwhile, they were like at the at the doors of the city about to just they took over Iraq about as quickly as um as Germany did to, to France. Was that two weeks and they just marched across the entire country? That's essentially what happened. Like they did not put up a fight. Uh it was the aftermath of, of Iraq that was brought. But Baghdad Bob all-time propaganda guy. Uh, I, have a, I have a question about Adam Schefter. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you're saying if he gets, it, like, scratches back for other people, does he get paid, like, under the table for that, or is that legal for him? Well, no. he gets paid information. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think uh, that he gets paid. Like, monetarily? He, he would probably get fired if he, right, were, that's if he what was I was on the thinking. take. But what happens what do you, is... What's his journalistic integrity, though? Like, what would that be ESPN. bending? <laughs> You said journalism and integrity. That's what funny. I mean. But that would be why you'd get fired from like the Washington Post or someplace like that. Like because, because ESPN. They, ESPN can't can't like be putting this guy out there as being the information guy if it comes to light that he's literally getting paid to say things from other companies on the air. Like I feel like that's a violation of his contract with ESPN. So he just gets paid in like in information in information because okay. the more information he's able to put out then the higher his value becomes to ESPN because he's the guy that's got all the scoops. But I, I still think his contract is coming up soon. I think that Schefter is going to go to a gambling company, and I think he's going to have then at that point. And he can say whatever he wants. All journalistic integrity is out the window. Like, I can say whatever the fuck that I want and make up stuff if I want to because, like, I, I work at a company. I'm not a journalist, but it but then it. it is he like setting lines for like where players are signing? Yeah, why would he? So no, I think I think he's giving information. Right, but I'm saying he could sway that information. I know that's something you can bet on. Like he could sway that information. Yeah, no, I that, think yeah. that's a much quicker way for him to get in trouble than staying at ESPN. There then then be it becomes an issue where he body. where he's like he's got the information that he's giving to the sports book themselves before the general public gets it, so they can adjust their lines in their favor. Right. Shefty Unleashed would be a hell of a... I think, I think I'm in on that. <laughs> oh, I mean, the stories he could probably tell Free him that he hasn't chains. been able to tell. Yeah, that guy is... I mean, he, he's played the game very, very well for himself. Um, all right, let's do some voicemails real quick. I just dropped the Mammoth Collection. Like on Open Seas? Yep. Oh, like Open just City? high school or talking about taking a dump. That's all that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's that's your opinion bro hey before you do i want to read this bro because shout out to this cat whoever this cat is i don't want to say his name but remember the last podcast i was talking about um 5g versus 4g yeah so apparently this dude works in the industry and he goes and who knows if this is true but this shit sound true as fuck so if it's not he got me but if it is it sounds plausible he said insight into the 5g he said 5G is a sham at the moment. Only place it's truly av available is in larger metro, uh, metros and campuses. Even there, it's still pretty spotty. They put, out, they put the 5G tag on your screen if you are close enough to, to potentially pull from the tower's range, but the coverage map does not nearly reach the full distance of where people are seeing it on their phones. If 5G pops up and it's slow, it's because it's trying to get that connection but ends up bouncing back and forth from LTE to 5G, causing the seeming drop in service. I work for a tech company selling M2M connectivity solutions. The large, large connections we don't see 
uh, or want to care about, but critical. And we are telling our clients who are asking about 5G that we are not expecting to push for 5G for at least another two years. Um, we future proof our parts so that uh, so to make it easier, make an easier transition when it's reliable enough. But now it's not that time. 5G is just a big marketing ploy to excite people and will be going on for some time. That I thought that was a really good explanation because that's that's exactly what I experienced with five, with five G. Every every time five G pop up my phone, shit is way slower. This shit makes hundred percent sense. All right, let's do it, man. Just, just, so shout out, to, shout out to that guy. You're my guy. Let's just uh, let's do two voicemails. Got it. We love Manscaped because they've got the best grooming tool in the industry. The Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped is just the thing that every guy needs in their life to make each and every day just a little more special. It's the Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. And get this the trimmer's advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your del- delicate balls. It even has a 4000K LT- LED spotlight so you can shave anywhere your heart desires. It's waterproof too, so you can take it into the shower. It makes shaving easy. Come on, fellas, keep those balls in check. Trim them up. Nobody likes a bushy package. And. February 13th is coming up. It should be a national holiday, National Shave Your Balls Day. This is one holiday that men and women can get behind. This package also includes the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer to whack all the worst of your weeds. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Go to get 20% off and free shipping with the code DOSE at manscaped.com. That's manscaped.com, promo code DOSE, 20% off with free shipping. Manscaped.com. Gift Cupid and Arrow for Manscaped this Valentine's Day. We love Manscaped. Check them out. And they also have refined cologne to complement your collection with smell perfection. All right. Um, Billy and I got to run upstairs for a meeting. You guys uh, Yep. Oh, good. <clears throat> What time is the game? Um, What's up, Mac? Girl, name boys and girl. Uh, this is Neil from Pennsylvania. I just had a quick question. Um, if you guys could and girls could teach a college course, what would be the subject of that course? And if you could have a guest speaker, who would that guest speaker be? Uh, I love listening to the pod. Hope to hear it. See ya. Hmm. I think I think I could teach a college course in uh, the evolution of sports journalism, nineteen ninety nine to two thousand fifteen. Few, I would take that class. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good class. Because it, it, it dramatically shifted over that time period. Dramatic. Like the whole embrace debate, Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless changed sports. <laughs> Shout out Skip. Dude's the man. Never give up on a take. That's where I get my ethos from, Skip Bayless. I was not wrong about my take. I was just prematurely correct. correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's skip in a nutshell, baby. I love it. And I would try to get I would, I'd try to get Skip to help me teach the class. Guest 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 speaker. I mm-hmm. like it. I got to give a shout uh, out to my college professor Rich Hanley. He taught a class called History of Football. Best class I've ever taken by mm-hmm. far. He brought in Chris Berman one day. It was so cool. Uh, just learning about like the history of the game, like like beyond what you would think like happened in the game. It, it was just so cool. Greatest class I've ever taken. I would teach that. Hell yeah. Fire. I think I'd go with um, like how to be a good human being, and it's a good class. It's a great class, and I would bring in Cornell West to teach it, and I'd take it. I'm not teaching. Okay, that fucking dude is just the greatest. I like it. Yeah, you'd make. Yeah, I, that counts. You would design the course, and then you'd be the guest speaker. Coley, what about you? I feel like mine would be a <clears throat> a counter to your class, 
um where it's had, had to be a, had to be a bad human being no 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 it's a pfp <laughs> yeah i'll no, be a bad guy you just hand everyone a knife that's their that's their textbook more people would sign up for the how to be a bad human being course than the how to be a good human being course no no percent. Percent. it'd be such a fun class <laughs> uh, um no Throwing but, shit at you while you lecturing and shit yeah <laughs> a, a counter to pft is where um like it's very similar in the teachings but the the ethos is based upon being louder than your opponent, and I would bring in Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> I'm not an expert in anything. Frogs. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, yeah, you can teach but there's stuff class. that there's. I would love to take, like, an advanced herpetology class, but I don't think, like, I could definitely teach out the textbook, but I don't think I'd be a... Uh... Nobody here is an expert at anything, man. We're just, this is just a fun exercise. I know, but like, I don't even know what I'm. Like, what about supplements? <laughs> no. <laughs> Have you, are you still <laughs> taking your supplements? I'm taking my supplements. I had to pee like a hundred times during the, the live stream yesterday. Um, prostate's doing better, though, for the most part, okay. if anybody's wondering. Eat your vitamins. Hulk Hogan. Yep. I would do one on the evolution of rest stops in America. Oh. <laughs> but you only know, like, rest stops as they exist now. Well, I would have to learn. You, you, you don't know rest stops from the 1920s? That's what I'll, I'll figure it out, and then I'll teach it. Think about rest stops before cars were mainstream. I know. That's, like, I think it would be interesting. They and then look at them now. horse stops. Yeah. And it would just be, like, troughs on the side of the road. And hey. horse. Yeah. No, and then I would, I don't know who I'd bring in for it, though. I'd have to find like another like rest stop enthusiast. Or mm, yeah, I'd have to find someone else that's obsessed with rest stops like I am. But I would do the evolution of rest from horse drops to now. All right, anyone else? Big thing. Uh, I would uh, I would want to do something about the psychology of sports fandom. Huh? Like the. Like, I, sports without fans, like, everybody agrees that it sucked, but to me it was, like, not not worth watching at all. Like if, it you was, can't, if you can't be there in person to throw mustard onto the field, I am, then what's I, the purpose? That's part of, like, I am very intrigued by the, what, the psychological makeup of, of diehard sports fans, like myself. Um, and, like, yeah. I take that class. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not versed enough to teach it. I would want to take that class, but like that's for sure. That's a subject that I would oh. be very interested in. Guys, I think the stock market's back. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Breaking. Who would news. you bring in? Like Boltman? Who would you bring in? As your um, guest? you know, you know what's a great show that people should watch. I wish I could remember the name of it. It's um, <laughs> it's uh, it's Deepak Chopra's son. And he uh, he did a TV show kind of on this subject that like equates sports fandom with religion. Very interesting. Uh, maybe that guy. I'm trying. Okay. I'm tr I'm trying to remember that. Hang on. But, well, actually, uh, it's an interesting correlation between you and Avery's class. Avery, if 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 I don't know if in the history of football that class that you took, did they correlate the the history behind like religiosity and football? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, we talked about like the football religion. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how it's like in, indicative in family and community. It's like it's actually a very intriguing it's psychological like a cult. Take. Mm -hmm. uh, Gotham Chopra religion of sports. What a name! Gotham Chopra. That is a dope name. As That's much as I don't like, much as I don't like Deepak. That's a fire ass name. I think he's a recurring guest on part of my take. Gotham Deepak? Chopra. Yeah, Gotham Deepak. Chopra. He's an American author. Um, ah, Chopra, that's cracking. Let's see. He's gonna do something crazy. Religion of sports. Yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, so he was on. He was on part of my take talking about his documentary. I think about Kobe Bryant. And yeah, he was like a big, he big Lakers guy. Yeah. Hmm. Fascinating guy. He also helped Michael Jackson write songs. Really? Innocent. Yeah. Innocent. Um, what else we got, Mad Dog? Hey, one more? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Everett from Fort Worth, Texas. Um, I just wanted to know what is your biggest, like, trivial beef with living in America? Um, so no vaccine passports, big B. But uh, I would say, like, mine is no drinking in public. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work. That's a good one. The The fact that we don't have more more cities like New Orleans where you can walk around mm-hmm. just ha- enjoying a nice cocktail in the open. That's a, that's a good gripe to have. Mine is uh, you have to pay for pizza on Friday. Bullshit. <laughs> like give, it, give us those vouchers. Come on. Mine is health care. You said trivial. Yeah, that's not trivial. You asked that guy sitting on the couch over there. <laughs> he agrees with it. That there that still doesn't that's you're you're making an argument that it's a very serious thing which is the the opposite of what we're saying. Oh, triv. Oh, I misunderstood yeah. the question. So okay, okay, okay. My bad. That's my fault. I did fuck that up. Okay, that's a very big thing. Uh... <laughs> One of the core tenets of the society. Yeah, that's my that's my that's, that's my bad. I fucked that up, man. It was a long night. Um, come back to me. Trivial. There should be more trains. Yeah. Yeah. We should have. Hell yeah. Tra- sh- trains should be nicer. The NJ Transit oh. trains suck. Amtrak is great, though. No, we're talking about like long distance trains. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We- we've talked about that trains, multiple period. times. I think yeah. I should be able to train to LA mm-hmm. from here. I think you can. Bullet you train. Can. Can you train from New York to LA? I mean, if you yeah. wanted to take, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm yes. saying direct. I you don't want the high speed, the yeah, no, high speed rail. Nothing direct, no. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to go to Chicago and then it goes down through like Texas and Arizona from there. Yeah, you guys should just train that way. The alcohol, the age of uh, should be 18. Yeah, drink alcohol. Mm, I think it should be 19. Just keep them out of high school. Yeah, because if if it's 18. Then every senior is buying hard liquor for every freshman, and that's that. You get in some problems when or, you got or, like fifteen year olds. Okay, is it, and, and, and in Germany, I think it's sixteen or something like that. Tw- Twenty one for hard alcohol, wine, and beer. 18. Eighteen. Yep, and that's the shitty one. That's like eight percent. You can only buy in gas station. I like that. That makes no sense, but um, because <laughs> you don't want them to think it tastes good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with um. I got a few of them. Airplane bathrooms are hella small. Like, we got to change that. Mm -hmm. And just in general, they need to stop packing people in airplanes. Just make all the seats first class. Make a comfortable ride. Like, it's just whack. Mm -hmm. Whack. Profit margins, though. There you go. There's there's fiscally conservative Billy popping up. (laughs) But what about... Yeah, you didn't bring up the profit margins when PFT was giving everyone free pizza. No. I said that it would disincentivize society last time. <laughs> yeah, he brought up my, m- mice and said that nobody's going to want to work I wasn't anymore. here for his last time. He was pitching free pizza. <laughs> oh, no. by the way, I killed that mouse. Killed the mouse oh, in my gross. apartment. Now, it turns out that there's probably dozens of other mice because I was looking at my, my apartment complex's extermination sign-up sheet, and wow. there's so many people even on my floor, that are like, hey, yeah, you need to send the mouse guy out. So, he's, just, he's just trying to cook, and you fucking ruined his... Did you, did you eat its heart? No. I definitely did not. Cut open and eat its heart? <laughs> I did not. I only to eat, signify? I only eat animals that are stronger and more powerful than I am, so I can gain their strength. You eat, chick- you eat chickens? A nervous little bird. I did have Chick-fil-A for lunch today, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, do eat, I do eat chickens. Chickens are more powerful. Um... All right. Anybody else have one, or should we call this a day, Coley? Yeah, I'm moving the Super Bowl to Saturday for sure. That great the, call. True. Great or, call. Or to the day before President's Day. Yeah. yeah or yeah, we'll move a holiday to that Monday. I'm fine with either of those. Yep. There should be a national holiday celebrating us, like in the now. Like everything that we celebrate. I think I said this before, but everything we celebrate as a country has already happened. MLK Day, July 4th, whatever the case may be. Like, we need a holiday celebrating today, celebrating everybody in the now. Everybody take off today and enjoy your people, man. That would be fire. That should that's be the Monday after the Super Bowl. Nah, nah. It's, well, 
It's just arguing. But it's not, a, it's not a it's not a holiday. New Year's Day um, is a holiday. I don't know. It's a day off. That's what I'm saying. I like, like a national holiday celebrating us, and that's not really celebrating us. That's celebrating the new year. Like I'm talking about actually celebrating people today. What? Celebrate people. Could you take one day a year and have it be a holiday that it's it occurs on the same day every year, but we honor somebody else? I, I guess it's like Time Magazine's person. They're like, who are we celebrating? La- this Labor year? Day. The workers. It's kind of a celebration of people. The workers. Um, yeah, we should take more time. I don't. I don't know about you guys. I'm not a. I, I don't remember to celebrate things as they happen. Like good things. If a good thing happens to me, I won't. I won't take the time to celebrate until unless somebody else is like, "Hey, you should celebrate this." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, yeah, okay, whatever." We don't take enough time as a society to acknowledge all the great that we've done. I've gotten overly into Christmas these last three or four years. I fucking love it. You're going to be one of those crazy people that gets like 17 trees in their home. Nah, I ain't going to be that crazy. I, I will get a tree. Like my, me and my kids, like we, we spent the whole day decorating the shit. It was fire. We was playing all the Christmas songs. Best Christmas playlist on the earth. You know, we, we, we made ornaments, painted ornaments, all of that shit. And so I'm, hell, I'm hella into it. I went all out. I spent like good little five six k on the on the gifts this year i did a lot celebrate the now i like that that's a good message all right um that will wrap up today's macro dosing we'll see you guys on thursday for nano dosing could be a good one be fun so uh yeah we love you guys any final thoughts before we wrap up we might have not done nikola tesla justice i think we did no i agree with billy shout out nikola tesla we are we're Team Tesla. We'll we'll do some we'll we'll tie some loose ends on Thursday. This that's actually like a great thing that we can do on Thursday shows is to just be like, okay, here's all the stuff that we fucked up from Tuesday. Like an editor's note. Yeah, so we'll get we'll we'll hear all the responses from people on the things that we missed about Tesla. We'll cover some of that. And uh that will be our sorry that we rambled on about Time magazine person of the year for thirty minutes. Here's a little bit of makeup covering some more facts. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys Thursday. Love you guys.